<laughs> what's up, friends? Let me see what's happening. Trap, what up? Glad LSU lost. That's what you get for not honoring the USA. I hope Bronny goes to Ohio State. Yeah, I heard that Bronny was hitting the transfer portal. That's pretty interesting. Should pay attention to that. Melvin Johnson said, good evening, bag chasers. A.R. Smitty, what up? Technically, Tim, what up? Q, Anton better not come for Angel Reese. Oh, I'm going to talk about that. The first thing I talk about is Angel Reese. What's up, friends? Looking forward to a great show tonight. What's happening? AD, can you do a video for the Patreon showing us how you set up the NDA agreements and non-disclosure forms? Oh, I didn't set those up. <laughs> That's what lawyers are for. <laughs> I don't set up non-disclosure agreements. I have to make sure that those things are ironclad and we have to get the lawyers on top of that. So shout out to all of the lawyers out here in the building. What up, Brittany B? What up, your car? All of my friends and family. Man, I need some, uh, I ain't gonna worry about it. Brittany, you know that this is after hours and after hours. Get it popping. So, so that Q, I ain't even had a time, a chance to review the video yet. I haven't even watched the video yet. I'm gonna be honest with you. I have not watched the video yet, and you're already talking about. So it's okay for men to be emotional while playing, but men or women, men, but women can't. Come on, Q. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? We gonna get there. We gonna get there. What's up, y'all? What's happening? How y'all feeling tonight? Um, Anton, why you never talk about sports with this much knowledge as you know? Um, because I think that sports, I think that sports, it, it requires for you to actually put a lot of effort into it. Like you got to have an entire channel or an entire segment to dedicate to it. Like you can't just do sports halfway. Like you got to go all the way. Like you, your whole channel and it could be centered about around stuff that's sports related, but your whole channel got to be dedicated. And I don't think that you can halfway do sports um, just passively. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think that this audience, because this audience over here at After Hours uh, is, it's a mixture. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I start talking about sports, that's a male dominated thing. Women are not going to be interested in us talking about sports here on After Hours, right? So After Hours is pretty much dedicated to popular culture. The Millionaire Morning Show is dedicated to everything that comes back down to the money, whether you're talking about politics, crime, all of that. Anton Daniels' channel is dedicated to everything in between, including relationships, culture, all of that stuff. And so if you're going to do sports, you're going to have to basically do a whole channel that's dedicated because you're going to just, you're dividing the audience and women is not going to want to hear about you talking about sports. They don't want to hear you talking about, um, you know, who hit the final shot and what's going on with the Pelicans and Zion Williamson losing weight. And they don't want to hear about that. You know what I'm saying? So you got to pick and choose your battles. <clears throat> I don't think that... Um, I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna go over um, Candace Owens too. Oh yeah, we got a whole show today. Let me turn on my stuff. Is the link pinned to the top of the chat? All right. So anybody that has thoughts or anything, you're more than welcome to be able to call call in. Hey, have y'all noticed this? Let me ask y'all a question before we get into it. So. <clears throat> I got to do Harley initiated tomorrow, OK? So tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern, and I'm still going to go right after that. We're going right over to the Anton Daniels channel, and I'm going to be live streaming, all right? Um, so tomorrow I'm doing Harley Initiated. Apparently, I'm going to be on there to debate somebody, maybe one or two people. I'm going to debate somebody. Um, I told him I didn't even want to know who it was. And it should be a pretty explosive show. So, of course, we're going to be talking about relationships and everything like that. Um, but it should be pretty interesting. You know me. I don't really care who I'm talking to. I don't care what I'm talking about. Let's just get it in and let's get it popping. Now, with that being said, and y'all go make sure y'all come in and tune in too tomorrow. So it should be interesting before we get into the show. Now, with that being said, um, have y'all noticed that 
anybody that had that makes a video in a disagreement with me, they never come up. Like I stream on multiple different platforms and on a regular basis, I allow for people to come up to the platform and disagree with me. But these people will watch, but they never want to have a conversation with me online or face to face. I have offered to pull up to people's cities, talk on camera, off camera, whatever it is that y'all want to do. I offer to come on people's platforms. People genuinely fear me. You have to convince some people to even cam up with me. And that's why this next, I don't know who this is that I'm talking to on Harley Initiated. That's why a lot of people, um, they have to convince other people to even talk to me because very few people are willing to actually face me. Very few people are willing to face me. There are, it is so few people that are, and, and for all of the people, it's, it's twofold. People do it for clout because they know that that's the only way that they're going to get views. That's number one. But then number two, very few people are willing. I will face anybody on their platform, on my platform, whatever, right? And people don't want to do that. They do not want to cam up. They do not want to call in. They don't want to do any of that. They just want to sit from the comfort of their home, and that's it. And I'm always curious as to how that works. You know what I'm saying? How does that play out to where people will stay in their own lane, but then at the same time, they don't want to actually, you know what I'm saying, have a conversation. It don't even have to be a confrontation. Man, listen, Umar fears me. He fears me. He fears me to his soul because nobody is going to ask him the questions or approach him the way that I do. See, very few people can actually stand before. Actually, I will tell you, hardly nobody can stand before me. When we get serious and we, we, re when we really go into it and we digging in, I ain't talking about no playful, random conversation. I'm talking about let's really get it in and talk. These people fear me. They fear me in a soul. They know that I will break their entire existence as far as what they stood for and wash them up and down the street. Very few people are willing to face me. And the only people that's willing to face me is people that ain't got nothing to lose. See, it's easy for you to say, oh, man, I want to cam up. I don't want to. No, you don't. You only want to do that for clout and you shooting your shot because you got nothing to lose and I got everything to lose. Like you got everything to gain and I, I got everything to lose. You know what I'm saying? So, but I still make it available to anybody. Anybody can confront me. If you feel in some type of way or you, you got a dispute or you feeling froggy, the link is right there. But they don't want to do that. They don't want to do that. And it's very easy when you a nobody too. Let me say that also. You know what I'm saying? When you a nobody and you just trying to get it popping. And then you trying to look for some content for your shit? Yeah, okay, go ahead. Do your thing, big dog. But for somebody that got something to lose and put it on the line, see, I'll put it on the line every time. Everything that I've ever, I've ever built and everything that I stand for, I'll put it on the line every time. I have no fear in my heart. Not one dot. Not at all. Not even a little bit of fear in my heart. Nope. And, and, and I, I am willing to face anybody, anywhere, anytime. Q, you're looking great. Okay. Where are you coming from tonight? I'm feeling froggy. <laughs> I ain't worried about you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was running errands, and then I had to go get my eyes checked and stuff, and then I was editing a video. Yeah, to get your eyes checked. What's wrong with your eyes? No, I just go get a yearly, uh, a yearly checkup, see my prescription change, and I just put on some lipstick because I was feeling like I looked a mess. Yeah, I got to get all of, I'm getting all of that stuff done. Actually, I got a dentist appointment. <laughs> I got a dentist appointment on Saturday, so. Yeah, get your checkups. I know black folks don't like to get checked up, but get your checkup, your teeth clean, Yeah. A yearly checkup. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this hardly initiated uh, thing I got to do tomorrow? Well, do you think it's a setup? Like, why why aren't they telling you who you're debating? Um, mm -hmm. it could be. What if it, what if it's that guy? I don't remember. I don't remember. Uh, you can't, him. but you can't set me up. Yeah, so I don't know why would it's kind of like suspect they don't want to tell you who. Oh, I could have found out. Oh, okay. 
I could I could have, but then it was like, I, oh, you know, I'm not sure. About, it's like I forgot they did mention, and I said, no, I don't say it. It was like, oh, you want to? I said, no, nah, I don't say it. I don't want to know. This is what I do, but it could be. Well, oh well, you huh? you stay ready. Hey, Rita. Thank you. It's public information. It's a dentist office. But um, you think you think I'm being set up? Is that what you think? I don't know. It's just like if you're gonna debate somebody, like don't they usually tell people, "Oh, you're gonna debate Joe Smith"? Like, well, no. Listen, Quentin. Every six months, you go to the dentist, and then every year you're supposed to get your eyes checked, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what your what your routine is, Quentin. Every six months, you go to the dentist. And then you're supposed to get your eyes checked at least once a year, and you're supposed to at least get a physical once a year. Once a year. Yeah, Quentin. Yeah. Get it together. I could, I could be getting set up. Wait, Harley initiated initiated is with the two guys. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, they don't look like the setup type of guys. They look. No, I know them. I know them, but I also told them that I I do any I I face anybody anywhere at any time. Um. I talked to him on the phone and stuff like that. I was supposed to, it's funny because here's a, here's a real caveat. So I was supposed to fly to ATL um, tomorrow. Is that yeah, that's you, Q. That's the thing. I'm trying to my life. <laughs> yeah, I was supposed to fly to ATL tomorrow. Um, but whoever it was was like, oh, no, I can't do it in person. Or over to whoever these people are or whatever. So. Wait, it's not a debate in person? Well, they do. They do it by the live stream too. So we're gonna be doing it online. So the debate. You know me. I, was, I already had my flight. My flight book. I had my flight book. My hotel. I was staying at the Epicurean in, in Atlanta. All of that. So basically, the debater. It's because I'm uploading a video. That's why my service is changing. Yeah, right that's now. probably why. Um. So it's because. Wait. So the debater knows you. He's debating you because. If he didn't know it was you, he would he would have done it in person. Maybe. Or yeah, maybe, maybe they're just inconvenienced. Maybe they just couldn't do it in person this time. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, oh my gosh! I don't know you. Why are you caving for Angel Reese? We ain't even looked at the video yet. Let me just put, use my this camera. It ain't gonna change. It's your connection. It ain't got nothing to do with the camera. Yeah, it's because I'm uploading this video. Let me just cancel. Okay, when it's done uploading, then we'll... we'll... No, it seems like it's going to be a while. I don't know. Maybe because I've seen a lot of hate, like, online regarding her. Um, Dang, my Wi-Fi is janky right now. I've seen a lot of hate regarding her. Mm -hmm. Like, they, it's just horrible. And I'm like, would y'all have the same blowback if she was white? Well, I haven't seen it yet. Let me um Just watch me, the video then. Yeah, let me pull up the video real quick. Hold on. Let me see. Oh man, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh what's her name? Angel Reese. Alright, let me get that queued up. Let me see if I can pull that up. Alright, let me see. Your connection better, Q. Mm-hmm. I stopped the video, that's why. Uh, I'm trying to get on my download editing type of thing like you. <laughs> Angel Reese and Haley Van Lith, and we'll open with comments from the coach. Thank you. I don't want to hear no coach. Angel, I know it hurts now, but you had mentioned just kind of what a wild ride this team has been on for the last year. Can you kind of describe what it's meant to you, what it's been like for you, both the, the positives and the, you know, the negatives? Yeah, we 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 we've seen everything this year. Um, we have been through so much adversity. So, I'm more than proud of this team. Um, we don't have that much depth. We had some injuries. Some time, I took some time away from the team. Um, so many things happened this year, and so many things hit us, and we never folded. And just being able to come out tonight and give our all for 40 minutes, we didn't. We came up short, but we we we, we have to keep our heads high. Andrea Adelson with Are the they sniffing and crying because they lost? 
No, I think she was sick. They they probably was crying. I think they had they lost though. They got they got. Yeah, they, they, they did lost. lose. They did lose. All right. ESPN for Angel. We saw the game. And I mean, I'm tough, so I tried to play through it, of course. And this is something that has been going on for a little while now. But I played through it, and I'm not going to make that an excuse um, for the rest of my play for the game. Go ahead. Uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge for Haley and for Flage. Just what a tough cover Caitlin is. I mean, obviously you were fighting all night, but uh, just the challenge that, that she presents. She hit some tough shots. She's a real bad. I don't want to hear this. In the eyes and really take on that challenge. Um, just try to force her to her. She put on both ends. Bro, let me tell you something. Everybody can have their opinion on Angel Reese, uh, but y'all don't know her. Like y'all don't know Angel Reese. I know Angel Reese. I know the real Angel Reese. And the person I see every day is a strong person. Is a caring, loving person, bro. The crown she wear is heavy, bro. She's the type of teammate that's gonna make you believe in yourself. Why? Why do they talk like hood chicks? Like, what is? Why is everything bro and yo and all of this? I don't know where that girl is from. What's her name? I guess she one of her teammates. Yeah, she is. No, she is. She's she was good too. But what is all of this like bro women. stuff? I don't know what all of this bro stuff. I don't even like women's basketball. I'm gonna say this. I don't even like watching women's basketball. But the collegiate level, them on um, this year, I think they had the highest watch viewers this year out yeah. of men's and women's. Like I'm gonna say this. This the women's has been better than the men's for this year. But yeah, no, it really has. People have said that. I haven't said that. I've seen other people say that. Now, come on, Q. You know they just hyping it up because they trying to get some visibility for women's basketball. I mean, this is collegiate, though. It's not. I mean, I've seen interviews with people, Shannon and all them. They're saying the same thing. Like, it's not I me. think it's all cap. Listen, listen. Okay. Women's basketball is trash all across the board. It, it is. I think that the collegiate level is way better than the WNBA. Like well, that's because year, they hyping up Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. Was that their name, Caitlin Clark? Well, it's it's more of them. It's more it's other players. Like I think uh, the USC played. They had one player on there. UConn had one player. Like it's not just these girls. Like these players have way better than whatever the WNBA be doing. <sighs> well, let's see. I only want to see Angel Reese. Really, so. I get to be around how pre play into her life. I've never lived. Outkick.com. Angel, do you have any thoughts on your uh, future plans in basketball? I'll make a decision when I'm ready. Uh, Jacques, do you say WAP TV in Baton Rouge? Do, do you need the players? The third quarter, what, what do you think kind of went wrong there? It seems like your little snake bit balls just rolled off the rim and some tough turnovers and so forth. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And I feel like I Ryan Den. <laughs> You did. Uh, ben Pickman from The Athletic. Um, this is for Flage and Angel. It seemed like, Angel, when you fouled out, you walked over to the sideline and you put your arm around Flage and Flage put your arm around you. Yeah, just mm. telling her just to keep leading the team um, and don't give up and keep fighting. I mean, Flage has done a great job when I'm down or not having my best game, being able to have a player like a teammate like Flage as a sophomore, only a sophomore step up and just lead the team and through everything she's led the team throughout the whole year so we've had that relationship and just being able to talk to her in that moment was great yeah she was just just like the said she was just holding me accountable you know i was telling her this question yeah. meets right here on the dais just taking the, the opportunity to, to really stand up for you and and what your journey has been like that we don't get to see I don't really get to stand up for myself. I mean, I have great teammates. I have a great support system. I got my hometown. I got my family that stands up for me. I don't really get to speak out on things just because I just try to ignore and I just try to stand strong. Like, I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Death threats. I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. I've been so many things and I've stood strong. Hold on, hold on. What does that mean to be sexualized? What does that mean, Q? I'm guessing, like, I don't know. They're fawning over her body, leaving sexual comments. You know, I don't, I don't know. 
sending her stuff. But I, I the death threats is crazy. I I know when I was on when I was on Twitter like a couple of days prior, like I saw some hateful stuff toward her. Even though like I've seen her act out like you know they're when you're playing you're more aggressive but then i've seen other players white players do the same thing and people weren't going as hard so like so well like, are you I more got, popular no no caitlin's popular too that no right. caitlin is, is a way better player white more aggressive doing the same type of hand movements but she doesn't get like the blowback like she but does she talk as much shit? Uh, somebody in the chat said i think it's quinn quinn said lsu um stayed in during the national anthem and then a lot of these chicks be on sports illustrated naked and stuff like that like i'm trying to figure out is it warranted as far as like because you know it's the, all it almost reminds me, well no 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 i'm talking about the sexualized part like it almost reminds me of if a chick goes out and she wears something super, super revealing and then she get mad at guys for trying to talk to her, it's like, well, what did you think was going to happen? Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know nothing about the sexualization. I don't know. See, the thing is that she says that, but she doesn't go into detail, right? So mm -hmm. we don't know. We don't – probably people didn't even know she was getting death threats. Her getting death threats is crazy. Like, I don't even care about the sexual but the, the sexual Everybody get death threats that got some No, Anton, come on. I'm not saying that it's right, Q, but I'm telling you, everybody that has a level of visibility get crazy people that come at them. Okay. I'm not even nowhere near remotely as popular as them, and I get people coming at me all day long. I mean, people threaten to pull up to my crib. People threaten my daughter. They threaten my wife. They threaten all of that. I deal with that shit on a regular basis, so if I deal with it, I know that anybody that have any level of visibility get some hate shit that come at them. Well, some people don't have tough skin. Like, they just want to go out there, do their job, and come back. Nobody no, they wants don't. To I don't believe that, Q. Some people don't want to get, the like, the heart. When it comes to, that's why I said not everybody's built to be famous. Not everybody's built to have attention. You yeah, but they leveraging it in order to get the money. True, but not everybody's built to be in the spotlight. Like, not, people really don't know what it might come from being famous. Like... I I think that is it is unfortunate because I do call out these goofies. I was just showcasing a dude that was doing it on a millionaire morning show the other day. Um, you know, and he was mad because I didn't give him a coaching call. But on the flip side, though, it come with the territory and people get rich off this shit. So I understand that the death threats and stuff is wrong and I'm never going to validate that. But the criticism and the sexualization, man, come on, man. They leveraging that junk and they getting rich off of it all day, every day. I, you're right. She's getting paid more than some of these, most of these WNBA players. So you're yep. right. Yep. You're, you're definitely right. But it's like some people aren't built for that. Nobody wants to wake up and get some death threats or get people spamming your social media account. Like some people don't know how to separate the two. And, you know, women, we're more emotional. We kind of feed into social media. She might read all her comments. Like, Yeah, just you got to cut that junk off. She need people yeah. around her. She need people around her to make some, you know, help her and make some adjustments. But um, like I said, I don't agree with the, th the death threats. But at the same time, man, I don't feel sorry for these people that be getting rich and famous for playing. Yeah. Well, man, listen, you, your life is good. Your life is great. Your life yeah. is great. Is somebody out here right now that's working in a dark fucking warehouse that's getting a getting yelled at and they about to get kicked out of their crib and you are very, very blessed. And again, I'm I'm mindful of it, but you gotta understand that you signed up for this. This is the thing that you wanted to do, and this is what comes with it. Yeah. And I don't think she was using that as an excuse. Like her interview, she wasn't using her getting hurt as an excuse. She wasn't using everything that pe she was just saying, you know what I go on with. I get so much stuff that you guys don't know what's going on with my life. I don't mm. think she was using that as an excuse at all. That's fair. Let me see what else she got to say. Let me rewind this. This over-sexualization junk, I don't know about all that, though. That stands up for me. I don't really get to speak out on things just because I just try to ignore. And, and nobody I, trips out on, and let me just say this, nobody trips out on guys. Nobody trips out on guys when guys be going through stuff. Nobody. 
But we got a soft spot for women. Oh, my God. Well, who got a soft spot? We're just, she's just telling people. She broke she her crying. Side. She crying. You lost a big game. Anton, no. you, uh, Anton, you've never played sports, have you? I've cried. I did. I've cried. I did. Okay, so I've cried losing some games too. Especially this might be her last time playing with LSU. That's a big game. If you if you really competitive and this is a hype game, this is basically a rematch of last year's championship. You know, a loss a loss is hurtful. <laughs> But is she crying about losing the game or is she crying about the criticism that she's getting from people? No, I think but see, the way that I'm translating it is that she's is she's partly crying from the criticism that she's getting from people. Yeah, to be passionate about the game is completely different. But see, but see again, I'm translating it differently because her, her teammates ain't crying. So I'm thinking that it comes from – because her teammates is defending her. Oh, my God, y'all don't know the real her, the real her, her. So I'm thinking that she's crying because she's getting overly criticized – for not winning or for for people coming at her no no i don't think so no if you watch the whole interview that the the reporters were asking everybody questions like Haley, Haley played horrible she should have been crying because she played horribly like how you transfer you supposed to stop caitlin and you let her score 40 points right it wasn't her fault but it's like she's crying like basically Sometimes when you the key person of a team and you get a loss, sometimes it's a big blame. Like you lost it for everybody. Like Man, I don't listen, think she was I think they need because... to put their big girl pants on. This is the oh shit they on it. They keep talking about we need to be paid similarly to men and that guys yeah. deal with this shit all day, every day. All Anton, day, and they cry day. too when they lose games. What are you talking about? I Who, see LeBron. And we, and, and we get on them too. Okay, so and they get on them too, and, and nobody complains about. It. They get on no. LeBron. They could say no. they say he le flop. They say a lot of stuff. Flopping. They no listen. LeBron get LeBron get people coming at him twenty four hours a day, okay. seven days a week. Okay, seven days a week. Let me get Quentin up here. But men cry too, so it's okay. It's okay if these people cry because they lost the game. That's I don't think she's crying because she just lost the game, Q. Yes, because you didn't even watch the whole interview. That's why. I'm we we reacting to it in real time. No, but you're skipping parts. You're skipping what other players no, no, are saying. Right, I am because some other hoes is boring. Yeah, exactly. So you can't hoes because then y'all gonna be like you can't put your two cents if you skip in parts because she could have cried at something that what's her she name was crying, crying from the very beginning, Q. Because they just lost Anton. Oh my god. I would cry too. Fouled out. So dang, I fouled out. I I lost it for my team because I fouled out. Like you don't know what this girl is thinking completely at all. Quinn, what do you think about this, sir? Uh, I, I hate this whole more than any woman on the face of the planet. <laughs> It's just, just like she looks like, like white women. That's just say no. That. It's that's that's not true. Ooh. Like just the way she plays the game, like the whole game, she was talking shit. Like okay, oh, women are, see, women, women are emotional. Crazy. They don't talk shit. Like the, I'm Wait, sorry, those talking? white girls don't act like her. Like the ragged they they don't. They don't. You're they don't. Lying. They don't. They don't yell and scream in people's face. They they don't do that. You're and they, lying. And, they shook, and, and, and they're contrite when they won. Like when they won, they went over there and shook their hands. What did LSU did last year when they won? They was fucking rude as shit. That's why no, people don't rock with them. Hands. Quinn, okay, Quinn. And, and you so can't and you can't just say it's a you can't you can't just say it's a black thing because South Carolina don't act like that either, and they're a whole I'm black not, team. So, so you can't say it's a black thing. thing. I'm not. Saying, it's I'm it's not ghetto. It's, it's ghetto bitches from LSU thing. That's what the fuck <laughs> it is. Okay, so when Caitlyn talks crap. She goes like this. She goes like you're a little player. Okay, the what's wrong with that? Thing. That's not talking crap. Those are gestures. She talks she crap talks in people's faces. Too. She talks okay. crap in people's faces. Okay, so they, go, they saw go her going the, la the last game that she played in the in the handshake line. She called somebody out. Take that bitch. They showed it on TV. Caitlyn ain't never did no shit like that on social media. This oh. bitch talks shit. Not Caitlyn. You don't watch this shit. You're caping for some black hoes because you're black. No, I'm, and I'm not. not gonna let you get away no, with that I'm shit. Not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. But you need to go on Twitter, right? I don't need to go, go on Twitter. On... I have the internet. I have the internet. Go, I watch go this on shit. Twitter and look up, look up Caitlyn um's attitudes regarding games. So someone on Twitter or TikTok broke it down. 
Like, I'm not biased. I don't really care about women's basketball. I'm looking at both parties and saying, okay, Caitlin does this. Um, Reese does this. Why is it a problem that Reese does it? But, but when Caitlin does it, it's, she talks too it's much. Okay. That's what it is. She talks too much. So, so, so Quentin, what are you? So basically, oh, what you're saying, Quentin, is that she get the energy that she put out. Correct. And if you look and outside the basket, if you look outside the basketball lines, Caitlin don't say shit. This bitch be on the social medias, running her fucking mouth all damn day. Her okay, coach so called her out on it. Okay. On, the, on the court, she plays, she talks crap, and she can handle the shit talking right back to I, her. I just, I just took it outside the, the basketball line so we can, so I can level set. No, no, but that's what Anton asked. So if someone dishes it back to her on the court, she can handle it. Okay, why is she crying then? She crying because she got humbled. She that's why she crying. She, Quinn, nigga, have you played sports? Not middle school sports. Let, let, let's just say, have nigga, you played don't play, nigga, I, nigga, I fucking walked on a UCO university and played D2 football. Don't fuck with me, homie. Okay, so have you ever <laughs> cried losing a game? Of course I, I cried. Oh, okay. So immediately after gonna... the game. Immediately <laughs> after the game. And, 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 it was, and it was over. She's crying because oh, okay. she got humbled. She didn't start crying until her teammate took up for her. She's not crying because she lost the game. Oh, Jesus Christ. She was sniffling prior to that, if you look at the interviews. But go ahead. Oh, oh okay. So let me play the, Let me play some of this. And then, and then because I haven't seen it yet. I'm reacting. To, I'm seeing it for the first time. Because I purposely didn't watch it. I don't really get to stand up for myself. I mean, I have great teammates. I have a great support system. I got my hometown. I got my family that stands up for me. I don't really get to speak out on things just because I just try to ignore and I just try to stand strong. Like I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Death threats. I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. Is it a possibility that she exaggerating? We don't know. We can't assume. We don't know. About the sexualized part, there's pictures of her in the, in the nude. I guess she got some kind of sugar massage and her naked body's on a massage table. Getting a sugar massage, like nigga, you sexualize yourself. All the half naked pictures you post on the on the in, on the internet. She got a photo shoot with um with um Sports Illustrated swimsuit. What you mean? Mm. Okay, what nigga, about the you other can say parts? no. You can say no. You can say no. Okay, what about the other parts? I, well, I hold on, let me play it. 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 I've been so many things, and I've stood strong every single time, and I just try to. Stand strong for my teammates because I don't want them to see me down and like not be there for them. So I just want to always just know like I'm still a human. Like all this has happened since I won the national championship. And I said the other day, I haven't had peace since then. And it sucks. And but I still wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything. And I would still sit here and say, like, I'm unapologetically me. I'm going to always leave that mark and be who I am and stand on that. And hopefully the little girls that look up to me and hopefully I give them some type of inspiration that, you know, hopefully it's not this hard and all the things that come at you. But keep being who you are. Keep waking up every day. Keep mo being motivated. Staying who you are. Staying ten toes. Don't back down. And just be confident. Mm. This is for uh, Kim. Can you talk a little bit? Let's wait till they leave. Sure, sure. Yes, um, then, only players right now. Thank sure. you. Sorry about that. If this is for Angel. Uh, can I? Uh, same question for Angel and, and all three of you. What What is the impact of the LSU Iowa rivalry on women's basketball? Let's start with Angel. Thank you. Um, I think it's just great for the sport. Just being able to be. Sound like that's all. Sound like she's that's a victim. All. She got humbled. She's a victim now. What yeah, do you think about that, Q? Do, do you think that she's a victim? She did she ever say she was a victim? She's not blaming the loss Black because man. of all the stuff she got going on. She's not blaming the loss because she got injured and she rolled her ankle on a camera. She never said none of that. That's what most people do when when they have an excuse. They say that's yeah, not, but my, she, my, she, my excuse she, is my excuse isn't my excuse. Yeah, but she never said that because someone asked who, her. Who does say that? Prior, she did say. I'm gonna bring up uh, Pan Africanism too in a minute. Go ahead, y'all. Reporter was like, "Did you hurting your ankle that um, hurt you?" She's like, "No, just, I did roll my ankle, but I can't use that as an excuse." She's right. She can't. Hmm. She did the honestly. Kaylin did. Kaylin outworked them. 
other players on LSU's team did horrible. It's not really her fault. Mm. But as a key player, she probably thinks it's her fault, but it's not her fault. Really, all in all, if you want to be honest, it's the coach's fault. Why is it the coach's well, fault? Because because she has five seven. That that bitch look like a damn cupcake. That little white chick look like a cupcake. That's the fuck you short and fat. Talking about six. Oh, who are you talking about? The, for LSU, the little white girl with the pigtails. That was Haley. Caitlin was that was busting her ass all night. Her name is um like Haley, Haley Lillard. Haley. Mm -hmm. It's called Haley. Haley. That's coach's fault. Why you got this five seven bitch on Caitlyn that's shooting her lights out all fucking game long? I guess what's her name? Flage. Yeah. Flage Flage held her four times. Caitlyn didn't do shit. Mm. Yeah, I think that they. Yeah, coach should have definitely put Flage on her. But I she think didn't do that it to the. Haley... She didn't do it to the fourth quarter, and and she was. Y'all yeah, actually shit. interested in this? Like y'all? No, it's this? because it, it's because like I'm not gonna lie. I don't even. It, it was a good game. I'm not even the past two games have been good compared to even the men. I've been watching the men's league too, and the I, men's I, league kind I of. Haven't, uh, I haven't watched one men's college basketball game. Yeah, it's not even. It's <laughs> not even. <laughs> I haven't watched one. I, I started watching girls when um, Caitlin and then that Juju chick from USC start playing. And then, yeah. I, 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 like, if, if you if you were born in the 80s, you kept up with Don Staley, Stroh Swoops, Rebecca Lobo, all no, them. Oh no, no, you yes, did. no, you like, did like not. The, 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 yeah, yes, yes, because they were the they were the USA team. They were, no, they, no, they were the no. The only team. name we know is Cheryl Swoops. Stop. Counting. No way. No, we know Cheryl. We know Don. We know Rebecca Lobo. We know Lisa Leslie. We know all them. But you no, Cheryl, bro, Cheryl, no, Cheryl, no, Cheryl, I was born in the eighties. I was. Too. Nobody knows oh. any. Anton, out of all them names, what's the only name you know? Lisa Leslie and Cheryl Swoops. Cheryl Lisa Swoops, Leslie was the it. first you person to dunk in the, NBA, in the WNBA. I remember it was like she barely got in there. Antoine, Anton, black women are never going to miss an opportunity to play the victim. <laughs> let's just let's let the cat out of the bag. We've all been in an argument with our wife or our significant other. They are straight up gangsters telling you where you could go and what you could do. And then the next minute, when they when they realized they was wrong, they crying. You know what I'm saying? And this is Angel Reese. She was the big bad villain all this it. time. We beat the white girl. They thought, it, oh, they want to walk out. They want to not show nah. up to the national anthem. Let's not forget, we hate America, right? This is the thing. When I was playing college sports, there was one thing that stood out to me that might not have stood out to the rest of the Negroes. My coach, I love the fact that I had a white coach who was a racist, okay? Because when 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 some people would start acting ghetto, he would say, have some damn class. You know what having class means? Having class is, means being respectful in victory, being humble in victory, and humble in defeat. Angel Reese mm. was not humble in victory. So she had to be humbled by Caitlin Clark. It was a lot of bad energy that was going against LSU from the very beginning. When you start disrespecting your country, y'all, people don't understand the power of like fan fandom energy in a room. No, you already brother. put a bad energy in a room for yourself when you didn't respect the national anthem. You didn't respect the country that has given you such a great opportunity. Go mm. play in Jamaica and see mm. if you have what you have as a college basketball player in America. The Can girl is disrespectful. Something? Just one second. She's disrespectful. She's mm -hmm. classless. And she's a she's a hoochie. And she got mm -hmm. humble. And, and I tell everybody, you know who gives the best? <laughs> do, do you know who the best winner is on earth? Floyd Mayweather. Because Floyd Mayweather has a pre-prepared, he has a prepared uh, uh, victory speech. He was a hell of a fighter. You know, I was a better yeah, he man do say that. He do you know say what I'm saying? That. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what Angel Reese should have said. She should have kept it short and sweet. They were the better team tonight. I tip my hat to them. Thank y'all for coming out. And supporting women. She said it after she cried. She made a bunch of, like, indirect uh, attempts at gaining people's sympathy. No, uh, they man. asked her questions, and she she responded to their questions. And let's why go back she was to up there crying. She lost the game. Were you ever an athlete? No, I keep asking people okay. like that. You like trying to. I was an athlete, okay, and I because... lost games and I won. And did you cry at any of the games that you've lost? Not, not, not when I acted like Angel Reese. 
Okay, okay. Let, let me let me address something regarding. I it up. Can I address something? Why they miss the um the national anthem? So they said that they changed up something regarding the pregame routine, and this is what the coach said. It was. I very, was there. I may, don't may was I there. Finish? There's no excuse. May I finish? Sir, 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 sir. I let you finish. Thank you very much. Um, she said it no, was. No, you asked me. Have you ever played sports? Have you ever played sports? If you've played sports, you know that what you about. Hold to on, say hold on. You got to let her finish. You got to let her get her okay, shit off. I have. I have they a direct said, response to what they, she's about they to say. Said, okay. You got to let the her finish. Coach said, the coach said it was unintentional. Unintentional. I'm reading the um interview. She didn't know when the anthem will be played because they changed up the pregame routine. It involved them leaving the court 12 minutes before tip off. Honestly, I did not know the national anthem was playing while we were in the um the the what's it called? So they didn't know. They left the court. Well, that's wrong. That's, that's wrong. So, uh, so I guess they that's didn't wrong. let people. Go ahead. Hold on, y'all got to let her finish. Let her finish. Let her finish. But if she's wrong, there was a reporter that's been reporting on these girls for three years, and they never go out. They never. This ain't the only time it happened. So you're wrong, and the coach lied. <laughs> the coach lied about what? Them not, them not actually being, being they, out they, there. They, they don't go out. And the, men's foot, and the men's football team don't do it either. Yeah, you know why? Because it's a bunch of Negroes on the team. Black Lives Matter. That's why. Of, the coach is classless. A bunch of hood the is, from New Orleans. The coach is classless, and the team is classless. And when they should be working on working on a on a on a art basketball, they worried about being social activists. They did you set see what Angel did to, Did you see what Angel did? Caitlin was shooting her little free throws, and Angel goes to put her crown. On the seat while she was shooting her free throws. Why she do that? Why she mess with that poor white woman? Oh the, my the, big, the bigger <laughs> issue is why do no, black wait, women? When, when LeBron, when LeBron likes to take the powder and go like this, it's okay. When no, what does it have to do with anybody, what does it have to do with anybody else? Like, he he ain't. They don't got. He does that every game. They don't got okay. nothing to do with nobody else. Make, make that Le, makes Le, sense. Le, like LeBron is a more legitimate is. king than Angel, and he don't bring no damn crown to the game, bro. Come on, like the bigger problem is. Go ahead. Why are you defending this classless hoochie behavior, bro? That's the I'm bigger not, issue. Because they're both double I'm minorities. Not, I think you guys are taking what she does outside. We're talking about basketball. We're talking about what she did at the game. We're no, this we're is not. we're talking about the interview itself. So let's okay, separate. But if, the, let's separate the no, two. No, we're fellas. not going to do that. We're not okay. doing that because if a basketball player slap his wife at his house. He gonna lose his job on the court. We go. Okay. Y'all want to be equal? Y'all gonna get this equal work? If you are okay. a man and you're a basketball player, whatever you do outside the court, Kobe mm -hmm. Bryant being in a hotel room with that lady didn't have nothing to do with basketball. It okay. still yeah. came onto the. It came onto the also, court. So. Okay. They don't like check the rules of the game, Anton. Check this out, Anton. My homeboy just sent me this. You said no one cares about women's sports. They said this game last night was watched more than the NBA Finals, the World Series, the Orange Bowl, the Big Ten Championship game, the Cotton Bowl, I don't the Thursday night that. football. Like, I said, I said that earlier. LSU I said that versus, versus shut down numbers. Like, it was a good game. Iowa, it looked up to its high. Yeah. I said that earlier. This was the most watched game in collegiate games. So – let me say something. Well, you can share my screen. He just sent me a text message. No, nah, I got it. I'm looking at it. Joe Palumbo, I think. It's the most watched watch college basketball game ever on ESPN platforms. That's what yep. it says. Yeah, ain't nobody uh, trying to watch layups. It was 12.3 million viewers, bro. Mm -hmm. The reason why they watch it is because Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark is draining threes Less from the half court. Like yeah, I, I think that I think that part of the reason for it is. We've never I mean, that. they're making, they're making, I mean, smartly and they're doing it correctly. They're learning how to promote um, women's basketball by creating villains, right? They got to create yeah, a, they, they got to create, yeah, they do. They got to create a villain and they got, this is gonna happen. I've told all my people this, the, the, the WNBA is going to ruin all these girls career. They're going to go to the WNBA and we're not going to hear from them again. Yeah, but we That's don't care about crime. That. She crying about that contract that she about well, to go we, out we, and take in the we, we don't care about that. But Anton is right, though. Let's just be honest. Like, even That's the problem. Um, Y'all don't care about nothing. No, we we don't care about the WNBA. But let's just be honest. Um, It was a, a news news report that went out, and they said that they were, like, ratchet hoodlums. Um, I think the coach addressed it. I'm like, wait, why? Which they are. But I, on, I think that I think, that I think that – 
again, they they doing a good job of learn, listen. They're exactly. leveraging every fucking platform in order to promote this. They talk. They got Shannon Sharp talking about it. They got mm-hmm. Gilbert Arenas and and Gil's Arena talking about it. They got Stephen A. Smith talking about it and hyping it up. And that's good. I think it's good for 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 them and it's good for the sport. Now, yeah. let's just be real. That's one game, right? Dope game, great ratings. I give them all of they, they props and everything like that. Women's basketball is fucking trash, bro. It is. Women it's don't even sport. watch women's basketball. The only reason they watch the game is because they her out representative Angel Reese was playing. If that's if at the real. highest level, if at the highest level, Listen, I tried to watch the All-Star game. Oh, my God. That junk was, was so horrible. If at the boring. highest level that that shit is just absolutely unwatchable, and I get it. Listen, Kaylin Clark, Angel Reese, whatever, dope. I, I'm with it. If at the highest level that shit is trash, it's trash. It's just trash, in my opinion. It's not entertaining at all. But I know that the only reason black women around the globe were watching that game is because Angel Reese gets on TikTok in that ghetto and black women gravitate to degeneracy. They so were why there for black basketball, people they were there for the frontal. So and question, so, why were black men like yourself watching the game then? I didn't watch that crap. So you didn't watch the game last night? No. No, so my, no self-respecting man did. I, I was watching <laughs> it so I could see that. Wait, beautiful. did you watch the game last night? Because I wanted to see that white woman bust Angel Reese's ass. That's what hey. hey, black men watched it just to see Angel Reese get checked. And get her ass whooped. That's why we That's watched really it. why they watched it. Because so y'all saying like, that it was also a gender war in this, involved in this? Nigga, it was the it Confederates a, versus the South. That's what the it fuck it was. <laughs> it wasn't a gender war. It was light versus darkness. Literally, bro. Black like, versus ooh. white, nigga. You should right, have right, that. Let, me, let me read these super chats as they piling up. Let me read these super chats, and then I'm going to move over to the... Uh, you know, you got Quinn. I ain't even going to read Quinn's. His is crazy. Um... Mr. Tamarez says, have you ever checked out Andre Norman? He has an excellent story of tragedy to success. I'm not familiar with Andre Norman. You're going to have to send that to me. King Sinner says, name a college male basketball player, NCAA, NCAA W? I can't. I can't. Mm. I can't name one guy. I can't name one guy. Shout out to Quentin. Uh, Antonio Watkins says, camouflage daughter. She raps also. Who is camouflage daughter? Oh, Her name is oh, oh, Jay, Jay. Jay. The, the oh, black okay. chick that was talking hood. Uh, do do this what come with having money or fame? Oh, is this what comes with money having money and fame? Yes, it is what comes with having money and fame. And, yep. and when it comes to the black women, there's there's four black women on the show disparaging what Ice Cube did to Caitlyn, giving her offering her three million dollars. They were like, "Who's the big three? No, what they all he offered her five. Well, they were talking shit about his league. Yeah, I know. I heard that. I, I was going to talk about that on the Millionaire Morning Show. King Spark fifty seven ninety nine says she did a whole swimsuit spread in Sports Illustrated and got paid for it. Ike Victor says Caitlin Clark backs up her trash talk. She is the goal to the NCAA basketball. Give them girls a forty piece with twelve assists. <laughs> Being sexualized. Uh, I think she is referring to comments made about her online. However, her social media is full of her tweaking in a u- in her uniform, twerking in her uniform. I'm guessing that's what you meant to say. So I think it's a mixed bag. Yeah, I mean that's that's the energy that she invite. Did King Sennett says, "Sorry, Ima- no, you go. Cool. Imagine her getting the same flack LeBron got. Oh, they will fold. She made a clay mold of her box and put it in line online. Really? Yeah. What the fuck she talking about being sexualized for it then? Man, it's all excuses, Anton. They victims. There, That's there crazy. Was a, there was a beautiful content creator. She busted down the difference between Iowa's team and then um, LSU's team. And the white girls were singing, making my way downtown, walking fast, like in pre <laughs> and pregame and fucking flaws. They talk about we gonna set this bitch off. And I'm like, you can fucking Hands get a hose. <laughs> King Stenner says, quick question. Ask Q, did she watch the entire game? Third and fourth quarter. I fell asleep. Timeout wow. says who hurt. Q had to do a show last night. Qu- yeah, so I watched the third and the fourth only. First, yeah. Timeout says who hurt Quentin. He's speaking from childhood experience. Uh, Seminole two thousand four says does Juju talk shit? Let her game talk for herself, or let her game talk for itself. King uh, Man- Man- Manasa says Caitlyn didn't cry last year. Q. She did cry. She did cry. 
And Antonio Watkins says Island Girl Q is Angel Reese's big sister. <laughs> what? Can Chris, hold on. Chris Mayberry says she actually crying because it's possibly her last game with LSU and they lost. Clark, Clark literally did it to SC, uh, South Carolina. LSU was called Dirty Debutantes uh, before the UCLA game. Yep. Um, Dominique Ward says, don't care much about women's basketball, but I'll watch college over the WNBA any day. Go check out Juju Watkins from USC. She's dope. Pocket full of dinero beats is in the building. Says, salute AD and the bag chaser. Shout out to you. Julius Jermaine says, Anton letting anybody on this panel. Why is Jazzy Faye here? Um, you do kind of remind me of Jazzy Faye. <laughs> and my dog 2K says, Uncle Ruck is tripping. Shout out to Q, Quentin, and Anton. Um, uh, Igbo says, Brandon, please get rid of those Elton John glasses, bro. <laughs> King Stennis says, Magic versus Bird, Black versus White. Uh, shout out to Q. Q just brought in a 20 ball. Uh, 2K says, hey, bro, put some respect on the sisters for real. Man, I don't care nothing about them hoes. <laughs> they all hoes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that Ice Cube offered Kaylin five mil to play for the big three. Big, big three is this oh. true? That is true. Send me the link if y'all not going to defend black women. Man, we don't yeah. care about these chicks. Um, the link is pinned to the top of the chat. The link is pinned to the top. Caitlin is superior than all of the other girls in basketball from nothing, uh, from nothing podcast. And Philly B says, maybe people are tuning in, uh, to watch because women's game is evolving and becoming more entertainment than the current trash product in the NBA. Listen, man, I could still go and buy all of the front row seats for like $785, bro. So from nothing podcast says Q, you cap. She did not crash. Cry gave LSU love last year. She, uh, I don't I think, watch it, so I don't know nothing about it. Thank y'all. I, I appreciate y'all. I think the people are watching Caitlyn. No people like to see a woman pull up from half court. That's what's entertaining. It ain't their little passes or mid range game. Don't nobody watch that. We watch it just manly to see, to see this girl pull up from half court. That's why we watch the game. <laughs> That's manly. But the, the, the thing here, Anton, the, the biggest, bigger issue here is there's zero growth that can happen here for black women. Because you got black women who know better, like the woman here, the lovely lady here, sitting up and caping for degenerate beha hoochie hoorah behavior. We are the only group of people that vehemently, like violently, viciously protects our degenerate class. Hmm. Nobody back in the day, people would say, like, hey girl, you need to, you know, you was raised better than that. Your mama didn't raise you to do that stuff. You had correction. Now there's nothing but condone, condoning, oh, and defending. And so you're telling me if you got a daughter, I got a daughter who's 15. Mm -hmm. I always talk to my daughter, have some class. Well, I don't even got to talk to her because she's a lady. She carries herself well. But I would be scared to leave my daughter under the supervision or tutelage of black women a day. Mm. Yeah, my daughter and they're talking about hands on your knees or whatever else. <laughs> Where does it stop, uh, my sister? When when is bad bad enough for you to say you know what ain't nothing I can say good about that she was out of line y'all got no like, bottom this sucks and I don't want to go here because it's Anton's show Juju don't act like this and she got both her parents at the house just why like, what what difference yeah. is it? It's hours we can talk about whatever Ju Juju got both her parents at the crib and she don't act like that Reason all right we we gonna pivot there. we gonna go over to uh, Nick Cannon and uh, Candace Owens. All right. And I'm going to um I'm going to post a video of Caitlyn crying last year in the interview process, you little. <laughs> she she missed everything we said. Damn. Yep. She, now, no, she didn't. Q got it. She knows what she's doing. The thing is is like I'm not trying to cap for her, her what she do offline. It's about the game. Just because she crying like everybody has cried after a tough game. Caitlyn's crying doing a little interview. Like nobody wants to lose a game. They have to sit in front of interviewers and reporters asking dumb questions. I want to sit in my my locker room and cry a little bit and the sob, not be cry. asked my questions. Like she was crying. I'm gonna send you the link. You guys can tune in. It's timestamp three minutes and two seconds. Kate, Kate, uh, Caitlyn was the White Knight. The Joker don't cry when Batman beat him up. He laughed yeah, it off. Crying. Like I'm gonna get you next time. Okay. Angel Reese made herself the villain, the tough, masculine, skinny black woman. Now she's crying and trying to claim. She's claiming abuse, man. 
She basically, you know how at time women what? say they were abused because it's very subjective. <laughs> Nobody really can define it. That's basically wow. what she said. All the abuse I took online and I was sexualized and all the things that she was that she was presenting as her strengths, her sexuality and all that stuff, all of a sudden became abuse. Like, but no, bro. What like, are you talking about? She's see, not making she don't know what I'm excuse. talking about. She's not making that an excuse on why she lost. She owned up. She said they played a bad game. She's like, what are you talking about? What What's going on? Had nothing to do with her game. Separate the Caitlin. two. Caitlin. That's, her crying had like, what are you talking about? And I posted the video for y'all to go look. She was she making was subliminal excuses, bro. We're all no, men. We all know when somebody is making an excuse without directly saying it. She was indirectly communicating that there was some other reasons why she lost. And she was basically saying the abuse that she mm -hmm. was taking online and stuff her mm -hmm. uh, hindered their ability to win. She said it without saying it. You got you got to do. And I know you saw it because women are great at reading between the lines and deducing shit from nothing. So I know you're uh, you know, you're you're feigning uh, ignorance here. All right, let me let me pivot for a minute. Let me read the rest of these super chats, and then we're gonna pivot. Uh, you know, victimhood is a badge of honor, says lucid experience. And Angel Reese couldn't go down without trying to come out noble and being on top. By the way, they are adults, not children, not kids. AP Funding says another great show. This is the new black culture. Time Out says uh, in two years they'll both be irrelevant in the WNBA between Angel, Caitlin. They probably make more than all of the WNBA players right now in college, combined right now in college. That's um, true. Classy Perspective says Caitlin Clark is going to get the Jackie Robinson treatment in the WNBA. Uh, she's facing a hundred more Angel Reese's in that league. Most are lesbians. Uh, yeah, they said, um, "What you call it?" Did a, um, your homegirl? Uh, what's her name? Melanie did a real good thing about that. Like, I guess white straight women are ostracized in the WNBA or something. Are they really? Wow, mm -hmm. that's they don't they, they don't like them. <laughs> huh. Oh shit! Y'all got Cole from Martin on the show. Um, from nothing podcast says she cried about the game. Reese cried about social media. It is different. Right. All right. So let me pivot for a minute. All right. We're going to get into this. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen this, but, uh, Nick Cannon actually pulled up on no jumper. Um, and he, they asked about where they brought up, um, Candace Owens. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this. And then I want to get your thoughts on this. Uh, that's what I wanted to speak on. Recently, I seen Jess Hilarious, you know, who won a voice. Yeah, yeah. Fact. Talking to Candace Owens. I fuck, I fuck with both of them. I like Candace <laughs> Owens. I, I like I like the I knowledge that she has. I like when she <clears> speaks. <throat> but recently, she just said some shit because she has a white husband yeah, and, yeah. and mixed kids. She said, well, people are too, basically, people are too simple-minded. I don't see color. I don't see, um, I don't call my kids mixed. But what I want to say is Candace Owens, unfortunately, your kids are mixed and your husband is white and you are black. We have no problem with interrac interracial relationships. That's fine. But girl, you black because when that officer pull your kid over, he's not going to say, I don't see a color. Yeah, I mean, it's she, first of all, from the perspective that she's speaking, because well, she, she I get what she's trying to she say. Come, she she ain't she was raised by her grandparents, all that you know what I mean? She like come she, from some money. Yeah, no, nah, not even no, she come from like some niggas? she a nigga. Struggle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, like, so how, never mind, like, never mind. Like, yeah. but we're gonna get on that. But in what second. she's doing, which I'm not mad at, like <laughs> she's giving niggas a uh alternative perspective. Sometimes again, first of all, she's a person in the media. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so we know what that is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like she's doing a job. So she's going to, the more noise she can make, right. the more ultimately money is being made. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Whether right. whatever platform she's on, she's a master mm -hmm. at being a person in the media. But I guarantee you, she's given a, a different perspective because she's like, I don't think the same way. Is that, and that's, that's what I respect about. That's a, Jess Hilarious is the same way. Like she, she gonna say some shit. and be like, "Hey, just, I don't I mean, know, just, this. I don't know the fuck about what you just said right there." Like, yeah. but then same thing with Candace. But I love both of them as black women. You right, know what right, I mean? Right. I love, I respect both of but them. But is mind. she saying she's a black woman, or she? She, just, she, she said that in the same thing. She was like, "I can't deny, I am a black woman." Yeah. But I, she even I think the same shit. She was like, "I used to like Asian men." Like yeah. her shit. Like <laughs> niggas can have a preference. Right, right, right. We like, have no I, problem with that. You see, my nigga, my fucking, uh, my kids look like uh, a social 
social studies book, nigga. It's a different <laughs> shade on that. Right, right. <laughs> Each I, and every I, one of them. My only thing <laughs> like, is like, I, I don't it's wanna... whatever you fall in love with, that's what you rock with. Now, I also, you know, I done sat next across from Dr. Umar and all this. I understand where he coming from, too, as well. We He's straight forward, though. If, if we trying to enrich our community, the black woman is the most powerful entity in our community, right. and we got to protect I'm that. just saying I want her to be a black woman. She is a black and, woman. No, no, I'm saying, I'm she saying. She just. She seems like you gotta it, have a it conversation. Kinda, with it kind of maybe I do it. It kind of help. It kind of helps her to be like maybe she's accommodating her husband or her kids by saying certain certain things. I don't think she it's can, even about that. I think I think she's a super smart person that likes to debate, that likes to challenge people, that likes to go. There, there's a one one point in time she wasn't uh, conservative. Mm. You know what I mean? And then she got let down. Like if you are gonna play that politics game mm. i mean i don't fuck with either side either way you know right. what i mean because it's like it's the, as we call it the lesser of two evils it was like there's no it's not a two-party system it's uh one party with two evil names you know right, what i'm saying right, like right. It, it's it's they just separated to make you think you got a choice but all of the shit she be saying don't be uh, somebody got to challenge it right you know what i mean it's just the fact that she's educated herself from a perspective that most of us have it now the guy uh, on the right, I think his name is D.W. Flame. It's Nick Cannon. D.W. Flame, I think that this, that's his name. He like yeah, a, he a rapper from my city. Yeah, I think he a Crip, ain't he? He an insane Crip. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to play a little bit more, and then we can get into this. There's a lot of shit she say that I don't agree with, but I, I respect the fact that you can actually have that discourse mm -hmm. in a respectable manner, but even... I. I think she moved like there's I got a lot of Candace Owens in my family that feel <laughs> certain you know what I mean like ah oh, here we go I gotta argue with her about this yeah. again <laughs> right. Right? It's, like, it's just certain things. Well, let me let me stop it before I play the rest of it I think that Nick Cannon is is making sense um about Candace Owens and that he's objective enough to actually look at it and call it for what it is I think that I didn't expect for him to take this position but basically, he's just saying that from what I'm from what I'm translating it, he's basically saying that, hey, listen, she's smart. She likes to just debate people. Um, she is a black woman. And I don't really understand what all of the smoke is for her because she's intelligent enough to be able to market herself and also get visibility from what it is that she stands for. So. That's kind of, which the problem for me a lot of times is, and what one thing that I don't understand is, why do all people feel like, oh, you a black person when you get pulled over by the police? I've never had a bad experience Any problem in my mind. entire life, not one. And I've been pulled over a lot. I've never had a problem where a police officer did, said, or, or moved any certain type of way against me at all not one time i don't understand that that's that's it's the, the people that I'm trying to understand. the whole comply thing for some reason the blacks have a problem with complying this is the issue black hmm. people have a problem with authority in all shapes and forms and so if they, they if they feel like if they listen to the police officer when you say can i see your license and registration they feel like they being a punk if they actually surrender it to the mm. peace officer who has been empowered to do so. It's the most ridiculous thing ever. Nine times out of 10, though, it seems like the people that had the biggest problem with the police officers are the one that's doing some crazy shit. They always got a record. I ain't never seen nobody got shot with a, with a clear background check after, they, after all this stuff came out. <laughs> They're all people I don't they want in my way. neighborhood. That's why I moved around white people. The engineer that graduated summa cum laude from Harvard don't get shot in his car. Just saying. Hey, Anton. As a black man, can you can you agree with this? Once you moved into a white neighborhood, you never got pulled over. Once I moved out of the ghetto, I did, I never got pulled over. I never got pulled over in my neighborhood where I live now. And it's like, I don't know. It's just like you're not if you're not if there ain't a bunch of hoodlums around you doing crime. They I don't have a let me tell you, you. I know all, I know a lot of the police officers. Um. I mean, some of them are the, are the parents of some of the kids that go to school with my daughter. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of the police officers. I know a lot of the sheriffs. And when I go down to Detroit, and this is the honest to God truth, and I put this on my father. When I go down to Detroit, because, you know, I got a place down there and then my office is down there and I'm walking down or I'll be riding my bike 
They'd be like, yo, what up, Anton, man? I fuck with what you were saying on your podcast, bro. I rock with that. Like, they show love. They show love, bro. Like, I've, ne- I've never had a bad experience. The only time that I've ever had an experience that might have been negative was because I was fucked up. Like, my license was suspended. You know what I'm saying? And he still looked out because he didn't take me to jail. They impounded my car, but they let me go and get that bitch tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So, I just never had the bad experience that everybody said it did. Um, and I grew up on Green Lawn between Norfolk and Chippewa, too. So, I don't really know what everybody else is talking about, bro. When you're doing day, wrong, it's like, you give off a certain a, energy. It's like accountability. You like, I did wrong. Here's my license and my registration and give me my ticket so we can bounce. Like, that's the only conversation you need to have. Yeah. Nah, but you know if you got a suspended license, most people going to be like, why don't you pull me over? They're going to try to make all this small talk to to kind of divert away from the fact that they're going to have to show their suspended license if they actually have it. The police are not dumb. They deal with criminals every single day. But they deal with guilty people all the time. Cops don't want to fill out the paperwork. Like, I remember I was talking to this girl. I was going to go see her, and she got pulled over for the cops. She put her cup in the – um. she put her phone in the cup holder. So I, hold, I heard the whole conversation. There was, like, license and registration. She's like, I don't got I don't that. care if I get pulled over. I'm but cool. she didn't have no – I'm just saying this, this – No, the for the people oh, in the oh, chat. Oh, for the people in the chat – I don't care if I get pulled over. I purposely speed sometimes because I want to make sure that ain't nobody following me. Like, seriously, like when I'm coming from a certain event and I take off, I'm gone. And I know it's a stretch and then I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that or whatever. I ain't going to say what my moves are. <clears throat> and and I purposely speed because I want to make sure that I'm paying attention to see if it's the same cars that's around me 10 minutes from now. You know what I'm saying? And so... I don't care about getting pulled over. And listen, I, I seen a guy, he said this online, and I absolutely agree with him. He said, he said, tickets are just a suggestion for people with money. That's all they are. It's a suggestion. Hey, I, hey, please. It's a recommendation that you please drive slower. You give a fuck about no ticket? A- a- Anton, in L.A.? Most people don't even have to pay tickets. Like, I haven't paid a ticket in 10 years. All you do is go to court, plead not guilty. I'm not going to court. They summon the officer. I'm going to give it but to I'm my lawyer. Saying, he don't handle that shit. But even if you broke, you go to court, you plead not guilty. The cop ain't showing up to testify on that ticket, and they just going to dismiss the case. The fact that someone will argue about a ticket in a place like L.A. is asinine. You don't even got to pay yeah. it. Yeah. I, I just don't get it what this pink guy's shirt was trying to get at that she's not black he's pink. he's i think he's speaking from like the black people's perspective and that he's trying to sort of like hold her accountable for having her position and thinking that she's better than black people in a way um I mean, you know what i'm saying the way that she is and, and and kind of being more on the you know how they say you more on the white side i'm gonna say this i don't know this guy but i'm looking through his ig he he got he don't have no room to talk about Candace. <laughs> yeah, okay. he uh, yeah, he, he well, about that life. He, he really is about that life. Baby uh-huh. daddy, like, like he well, why why do you have room to talk about Candace? Like, I'm just confused. You can't say she's not black. That's crazy. Like, like, I don't know. I, I think these these podcast these new podcasters are weird nowadays. Just and then I think that Nick Cannon is the wrong person for him to have that conversation. I don't even think he got one, he got like one black baby mama. The rest of them are foreign. Well, Nick like, Cannon was actually defending her. No, no, I agree. That's why I'm like, well, he all know why. the wrong person. He the what, wrong what, one. What, what, what qualifies a person to have this conversation, Q? Not him. That's not what I asked. I, I answered. That, that's, I'm answering. Well, hold on. Before, before we get into it, before we get, let me play the rest of it real quick. And then we can deep dive into it that certain people right. feel certain ways about and you know uh, i don't knock her because i got my own shit. okay okay i all i'm saying candace is we are i don't want the people to stacy dash you you know what i'm saying i don't <laughs> but want see to, that's a different thing like, she, she, at that. least she's coming from a place of like she know what she talking she about stacy dash didn't wired. even know dmx she died she was, oh she just got fired yeah, yeah. Oh shit! For see? being, she, she yeah. found out she, she was a nigga real about quick. Ben and he, <laughs> see, she said, like, she have the power to uh, fire her. She said, but that's right the here thing. Even I thought she was a nigga real quick. Stacy Dash too. Don't. 
But she about to have her own YouTube. Stacey watching. Dash ended up being about, clueless. Okay, someone's got fired. Not Stacey <laughs> right, Dash. Right, right, right. But I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> let's let's look at this clip right here that we got with Jess Hilarious and Stacey Dash. <laughs> oh shit! Candace <laughs> Owens, Lairs. nigga. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. Candace Owens, nigga. Fuck. Oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I already know what it's. Stacey Dash. Yeah, this is the God is good one. Let me get a remix. God is good. God is good. Amen. <laughs> No, 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 no. I thought you were going to no. say God is great. No. Thank you for the food. God is great. No. I no. didn't know that. God, 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 I'm, I'm going to do you, Charlene. Oh, she should have known is good. that. All the time. Definitely and all the time. God is good. She, she, she grew up with her that. grandparents. I would have never known Grandparents that. know that, Nick. That's you gotta it's go okay. to church like to know that. I've though. never heard it's that. Okay. In my we, life. It's okay. We it's okay. It's okay, Candice. And the, <laughs> the black community is gonna back you up. It's once again. Going. She hey. know now. We are not turning she against. Now. She know now. We are not turning against you that quick. We ain't gonna let you I, go. I, I, this is what you understand. And I just get into this politics shit. But black people, we have naturally been more conservative. More than anything, like if you really, I mean, the shit that you're talking about, like the the Democratic Party is the party of the Ku Klux Klan. Right. Like yeah. if you think of civil war, like we was rocking with the motherfuckers up north who were conservative. Mm. The Democrats was the Confederate motherfuckers who didn't fuck with <laughs> us, who wanted to keep us in slavery. Right. And then they did a Jedi mind trick on niggas and made you think that they was rocking for us. First of all, neither of them are rocking for you. They right. still treat you like property either way. Right. But if you're gonna rock with our <clears throat> who we are as a people, we some get out and get it on your own type shit. We some hustlers, we some CEOs. Right. Nigga, show me one real CEO that is a liberal. Mm. Niggas is about they back. Now you got them people who pretend to, and ain't nothing wrong with you being liberal, but that shit for what it is now is like, we, we about, look, I'm gonna make some money. Nigga, you can make some money. You can make some money. That's all, like, nigga, I want my guns. Mm. You know what right, I mean? Right. I want, like, it's just like, if you think about what a conservative is, that's us to its core. And then don't put the our spirituality on it because it's a lot of beliefs that just because of we was raised in church and things that we, uh, the things we stand on mm. are more conservative than a lot of that shit of, oh, everyone's equal and everybody like right. that shit sound good right, and, right. but when you get to the ideas of what we really stand for like i said i'm i'm conservative about some shit but i'm i'm liberal about certain things but i'm probably more conservative about shit right, especially right. when it comes to my household and who i'm protecting because right. that ultimately is what you want but that idea of everybody and Everybody's it sounds equal. good right but when you i'd rather somebody be up front in my face then give me the bullshit that like somebody else is trying to pretend right. like they're helping me out right. when you still just treating me like shit just like the part the, I, if you ain't if you don't fuck with me let me know up front mm. what do y'all think about all of that i think um, um I, I think i told you that um stephen a smith was on the on the pat david podcast and i think he said it best he said that most people are conservative at home but democrats at the polls mm. And I was like, that shit hit hard. <laughs> this is exactly what's wrong with the black community. Uh, black folks know better. We're not ignorant. We're not uh, uneducated. We know what's right and what's wrong. The problem is we have so many excuses for voting and, op and operating against our own best interests. Like even Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon is purposely trying to make himself out to be dumb before he actually drops a point that he's well versed on that's what we do because he knows that if he just got up there and talked like candace owens does like where he just gives it to you straight no chaser and doesn't put the like i said the little disclaimer like i said i don't mess with none of this stuff actually he knows he'll they'll turn on him black people yep, will turn on that's him. true so it's all about delivery he knows he he knows how to dumb it down so hyper emotional negroes can digest it he's just being non-committal he's being a middle of the road fence straddling negro now he told you he, he did say who he was though he but he's still he's, he's a still conservative on a low no no he's like he's like i'm more conservative but you know a lot of stuff i'm liberal. he's doing that fence no, no 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 i understand see Kent, nick is smart enough to be able to say that you know, he gonna paint, he gonna say he gonna be like, yo, I'm still a nigga though. You know what I'm saying? But in reality, <laughs> Nick is basically giving you all of the hints and the talking points to let you know that, yo, listen, I'm really conservative on the low though. Real talk. I mean, yeah. that's what he's saying. But he's giving, you know, I always say this, you can never give a black person room 
to to run out or make an excuse. That's what I feel. Well, that's what I call leaving the door open, right? He leaves he leaves a little space for that cognitive dissonance to creep in. Candace Owens doesn't. She she hits you across the head with it. So you know, like, dang, I just got hit, and this is what it is. There ain't no two ways about it. Nick, he's still leaving that little escape route for black people to try to squeeze in some ignorance. I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't do that, Anton. I don't do well, that. Well, because Nick is an entertainer, too, though. You got to yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we, he's still in the entertainment business. And so he understands that. He understands that the, the truth is a hard thing to swallow for most people. Like when, And I ain't even saying, like, the truth. I'm saying when you speak um, honestly, I, should, I guess I should have said honesty. Honesty is a hard thing to swallow from somebody because honesty is not saying that you right or I'm right because the right or wrong is determined based off of your circumstances, whatever it is that you stand for at that particular time. But to be honest with who you are to your core versus to be honest with who you are based off of who you think you are and what your mama put into you or how they told you to vote. If you ask most people, which, you know, whatever you vote for, you vote for. But if you ask most people why you don't like Trump or why you what didn't you like about his presidency, very rarely can they ever tell you anything, which if you decide to vote for somebody else, that's cool, too. But I just want people to be educated and I want them to be honest about why they don't like somebody. Say you don't like them because your mama told you not to like them or because your girl is sitting next to you and I'm telling you to blink, blink twice. But don't say that you don't like them just because of some made up stuff from an Internet. talk. That's that's crazy to me. And I think that she she is she's straight. No chaser. And that's the thing that makes people uncomfortable. Right. But we need more of that in, in our society nowadays, because I'm telling you, if you give a black person room to make up some fantasy bullcrap excuses, they will take it, man. I seen black folks. You talk, why you voting Democrat? And da, 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 they'll be like that. When a black person told me Joe Biden has changed <laughs> after 40 years of praying on the black community, <laughs> I do. We could make an excuse for anything. <laughs> but when like, you, we are done. When you think about it, like most people don't have enough knowledge of policies or anything to even vote. Most people vote with their emotions. Yeah, but then at the same time, all of that stuff is right on a website. Like you can really just go and look at the policy on the website. But but, but, you, but how but many black people you think really doing that though, bro? Joe yeah, Biden that's, that's said, true. "If you don't vote for me, you not black." Directly to a camera. That was all you needed to know. He was up to no. Yeah, that shit Come was wild. Now. Come and they on still, now. still, still, and they still voted for him. You know me. I was on. I always got a personal experience when I was living with my grandpa back in the day. He told me if I didn't Joe, what's his name? Carrie. What was that John dude's Carey. name? Oh, Carrie. John Carrie. He said, if I don't vote for Kerry, he said, get out. And I was like, dang, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> got out. My grandpa was a Republican. Thank God. Anton, but look at this. We all know we don't want no man with an intact phallus going in the bathroom with our daughter. We know we don't want no grown man on the basketball court with our, our, our daughter or our, our wife if she plays sports. You don't have to have a extensive knowledge of politics and policy. At this point, the disparity in democratic policies is so acute that even a layman can identify it and see what's wrong with it. Cause a five-year-old kid could tell you, I'm a boy, not a girl. Like if you try So to let me ask girl, y'all a question. Do y'all do y'all like Candace or do y'all do y'all are y'all indifferent or do you dislike her? I like I Candace. Her. She I, like I don't Candace. care who she married to. She can I don't even care. Candace is smart. Oh. Candace married a white no. guy because she needed somebody rich enough for if she get canceled and can't work, he could support her. You know, what I don't think she people really canceling anybody anymore though. Yeah. But in it's case, too but hard. just in case. platforms. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of options. I think that that yeah. that kind of flew off a little bit more when you have you didn't have as many options anymore. Um, yeah. I think Candace be saying a lot of stuff people be thinking but afraid to say. Man. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, Candace I think she, she holds person. she holds people accountable, and they don't like it. I Nobody don't think that a lot of pro black people are really pro black. I think that a lot of pro black people are standing on that for different reasons. Um, I think some of them is just that it's the popular thing to do. I think for others, um, that's just what they've always been taught. 
And then I think that it's, it's an easy way to monetize because it's still a large demographic of people um, that don't want to accept that race has probably a little, a, lo a lot less to do with your success than you want to give it credit for. We the most, what they say, we the most privileged black people in the world over here. <laughs> you got, uh, yeah. Anton, I always ask people on my channel, I say, name one thing that white supremacy is preventing you from doing. I haven't met a black person yet who can, the only thing I heard one guy say, oh, getting a loan. I'm like, no, nah, that's your bad credit. Stop being cell phone <laughs> but no, seriously. And they'll admit white supremacy is not stopping me. I am a pro-black. I'm a pan-Africanist person. But yeah. guess what I do? I go buy property in Africa. I employ African people. Yeah, but it's Africa different right because, here. again, I don't care what, what people stand for, but I want them to actually be able to stand for it right. based off of reason and logic. You know what I'm saying? Even if somebody say to me, oh, man, I'm voting, I'm voting blue. I don't give up. Like, that's your American right to be able to vote blue. Um, I'm just curious as to why. You know, and if I ask you why, you say... Because I don't, I hate Trump. Like, that's not a reason for me. You know what I'm saying? Give me the reason why you like the candidate that you like, not for why you dislike the other guy. That that doesn't make sense to me. I got one person who gave me a legitimate reason for voting for Biden, and now that person is voting for Trump. It's my friend DJ. I said, why are you supporting Biden? He said, I know Biden is in crap. He said, but Biden supports unions, and I'm a union, I'm a union electrician. I said, dang, that's the best answer I, I got so far. But I don't now, think that he does. Now, no, now we know he doesn't. But remember when he was trying to get in, he got the support of all the unions and was talking pro-union. Now that he sold out the rail workers and stuff like that, my homie hit me up like, yo, bro, I ain't voting for Biden. He sold out all the unions. Uh, so now he's changing his vote. He's a person voting based on what benefits him. So I do like that. But most people don't got that uh, type of r rational thinking. They're just going emotionally. Biden was nicer. That's why they voted for him, apparently. Yeah. Hmm. Q, what do, what do you think about Candace? My bad. And then uh, you, I was talking, but you have all these rappers promoting Biden. And, you know, people going to jump on the bandwagon because they see Cardi B and Flocka. <laughs> So people just jumping oh, on the bandwagon. He he said he support black people. Oh, he must be for us. So let's vote for him, even though they really just don't know. I like Candace. She just, as I said, she say stuff people don't don't really want to say out loud. You know, I don't care. Who, as I said, I don't care who she married to. That has yeah. nothing to do with what, what she to be talking about. Like I think I saw the interviews, not the interviews. I think she went to go speak at the college where they were talking about trans, and then yeah. um, all these trans say they're natural born women, and then she all was this pregnant. Type of, yeah. She was pregnant too. She was pregnant. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, we need more Candaces. Yeah, I like Candace a lot. Nah, pe black people are coming around on Candace Owens, man. And you know the sad thing was all the black media outlets the Liber the liberal media outlets, I'm not going to say no names, but they were attacking Candace, and what they did was they were able to create this narrative surrounding hey, her. Room. That was, yeah, it was untrue. And black people, because a lot of us get our information from those places, they basically had an opinion of Candace that was based on a false narrative. Candace has never mm -hmm. said anything that has hurt the black community. Candace only talks about what black people need to do to repair what we got left if anything of a community and the reality is black people for so long under people like martin luther king and stuff have been taught that the epitome of ex the pinnacle of existence is to be like white folks and to be around white folks and to be with white folks so when someone comes in and say no build your family build your neighborhood you committing blasphemy in black in black america because we, uh -uh, we on our way to the upper room with white folks. How dare you tell us to stay where we at? Like, Anton, you know black people be like, redlining hurt the black community. Yeah. I, say to this, I say to this day, look, fool, how did someone force you to stay around your own people hurt you? How did racists not letting you move next door to them hurt you as a black person? Once you look at the black argument, you see that it makes no sense. It falls in on itself. Mm. I'll say that people with Shader and Joe Budden, but guess what? When Candace went on their shows, they had no pushback for her. Mm -hmm. Did y'all see that? They didn't have mm -hmm. no pushback. So Joe Budden, 
Oh well, they're not, they not even built to be able to have that type of conversation. He exactly. was, no, they niggas. <laughs> yeah, he was yeah. way like, out of the league in the first place. Charlemagne was silent. Like, exactly. I never saw Charlemagne so silent in my whole life. He didn't have nothing to say. Yeah, he they not built they not built for that. Um they talk a lot. They they seem smart to to people that um to their core audience, but they not built to be able to have that conversation outside of listen, these people in my opinion they they it's all it's all pandering to an audience. And when you get them outside of their comfort zone and you ask them some real questions, they'll fold. They'll absolutely fold. So, you know, I I think that it is pandering. It is you know, capitalizing off of negativity in order to try to justify their arguments. But I don't see it as, as beneficial to anybody. And that's the most unfortunate part. Mm-hmm. And I don't even understand how somebody could say that they pro something, but they hate somebody else. That's one of the biggest arguments for the pro pro black community is that, Oh, I'm not against these people. I'm just for black people. But then at the same time, most of the people that they go at or that they have this, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 disagreement with like like when I seen Umar Johnson right and Candace when they asked her on a breakfast club they said yo you know would you talk to you know what do you know about Umar Johnson and she was like oh I don't have an opinion about him but I'm willing to talk to him and the next thing you know you seen Umar Johnson going live Candace Owens is this that this and that and I, I don't think that he really want to have a conversation with her he just want to continue to talk to his audience that's how you know people are not really trying to make progress. They're so on discord. Yeah. Umar is a grifter. As a Pan-African person, I'll tell you, I used to be a fan of Umar. Uh, I actually used to book Umar for a place that I work. I did a study group at in Long mm-hmm. Beach. I'll tell you, Umar is a grifter. He's only about getting money and getting which is fair. Charged, yeah, which fine. is fine. But how does that help you love black people so much? Like, you think Umar don't know that black people need to vote for Donald Trump because we go, do you, when Donald Trump offered black people the $500 billion platinum plan, that was like a signal. Put all your BS down. You need to encourage your people to go in this direction so we can get something for our vote. When these dudes kept grifting, I was like, these guys ain't interested in no black progress. Because mm-hmm. it don't take a genius to say, look, guys, there's roaches in that house. Maybe we should go sleep over at this house. You know what I'm saying? You don't sit up and try to work the middle and try to make all these reasons why it don't matter who you vote for. That's why I can't get down with Roland Martin. That's why I can't get down with Mark Lamont Hill. I can't get down with none of those people because those people direct their people's attention to non-issues, which really – hurt us because it causes us to blindly go into supporting things that just have a disastrous effect on our on our community like at some point you got to put down the act and just be real for a second let me read some of these super chats a few of these super chats and then i'm gonna move over into uh gene deal freedom kev podcast says did you guys see boosie blaming on racism that's why lsu lost the game black folks are pros at pulling the victim (laughs) i did not see that Maybe I'll save that for, uh, what is it, Thursday? Dame Sniff says, what is an example of an elite black person? Anybody want to answer that? Anton Daniels. Anton Daniels. Uh, Anton nah, Daniels outside, outside of you. <laughs> Look outside, at him. Outside of me. <laughs> outside of you, an elite black person, Robert Smith. Robert uh, Smith, the billionaire Denzel Robert Denzel Washington. Denzel LeBron Washington. James. Come on, bro. Like, Look at any black person that's working hard for what they want. That's an elite black person. I don't I care if you're trash man. You know what I'm saying? Check out Candace when she goes to college and she is not weak at all. Yeah. I've seen her on a lot of the, a lot of those different um tours. Uh she spends time uh, also working with Turning Point USA. So I don't know if anybody's familiar with Turning Point USA, but uh Charlie <laughs> Kirk. Charlie Kirk is about about that. Umar is the only comedian that cat didn't call. <laughs> Jesus Christ, y'all some wild boys. Um, let me spin over for a minute. So, are y'all familiar with who Gene Deal is? Yes. No. The guy who's the expert on Puffy. Yeah. So, Gene Deal. He's a what? <laughs> he a Puff expert. So, Gene Deal was actually a bodyguard, a former oh, bodyguard Lord. of, well, I think it was Big. Don't quote me on that. But a former, well, basically, he was a bodyguard, bodyguard for Bad Boy, Big, and Puff, or whatever. But Gene Deal has said more negative stuff 
about Puff, I guess after he got fired or Puff not fucking with him or whatever. Um, he said more negative stuff about Puff than anybody on the internet, than anybody on the internet. Um, one of the things that he's saying is that if Puff go to prison, that, that he'll lose his life and he don't care what happened to him. Check this out. It shares and revolt. Listen, there is no, he has to do that because no company wants to do business with somebody who, who is being accused, have allegations against them for sexual misconduct and deviant behavior. Nobody wants to do business with that. All the shareholders, it ain't nothing that he's giving up. They like, yo, listen, give me that. Take, they said, <laughs> they did a ditty. Take that, take that. You understand? They are gonna take that from them. The shareholders is gonna say, yo, listen to me. We all gonna pull out. <laughs> no ditty. Oh. But we all gonna pull out our shares and everything if you don't give up what you have in the company. Did you see that video that went viral of Diddy pacing around the airport after his houses got raided? I seen that video. I seen that video. And I seen that look in his face before. <laughs> I seen that look in his face. You know what I'm saying? Um, when he was with the same gang and uh, Mike Owens, a.k.a. Mike Cock, everybody could tell him. D. Ferg did a collection for him because he didn't know how he was going to pay his rent. And he didn't know how he was going to uh, 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 pay his rent, uh, child support, and his car note. Because he had one of those uh, drop-top Cabarets Volkswagens. So Mike gave 5000 I wasn't giving him nothing. I'm just telling you right now. D, D was just collecting money for niggas. You know what I'm saying? Yo, man, we got to make sure because he want to kill himself. He going to kill himself. Did he have that pace? And he had that look in his face that he know something may be wrong or they may have something on him. Because they took things out of there. We may not have seen what they took, but they had bags and boxes of stuff that they took out of there. So he knows he's getting a play by play of what's going on. And even back then, doing that city college when he was when he was fired from Uptown Records, he was making statements about doing himself. He had that same look in his face. Yeah, he looked worried, man. I'm not gonna lie for a split second, man. I felt bad for him for a split second, but yeah. Like everybody, I get all kind of hate mail. IGs talking about that I'm trying to take a black man down. No, 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 no. I went through every step you supposed to go through when you got a problem, you got a situation, you got an issue with a man. You understand? I get in contact with him. Tried went to mutual friends. Let's sit down and talk. What you did to Wolf Mother wasn't right, bro. You don't talk to her like that. If Wolf was alive, he'd take your head off. You understand? Do y'all think that this guy is just bitter? Or do you think that he actually... Had, because everything that he's saying, and I know a lot of people are saying that Jane Deal is... Uh, because he was somebody that was close to Puff at one time. A lot of people are saying that Jane Deal has um, an inside track on how Puff thinks and all this. And he's made a lot of money and done a lot of interviews of talking about Puff. Do you think that a lot of these people are talking out of being bitter or do you think that some of these people are actually uh, have valid arguments um, about how it is that they see Puff? It can be both. We would never know who's telling the truth or not because we have seen people lie on people. We have seen women lie on men. We have seen men lie on men. So it's like we, he honestly, he do sound kind of bitter but then again, I, that might just how he come off. But he might be telling the truth. 
You never said that we never see women lie on people. You forgot that part. You never said what? what? I said she never said that women lie. She said men lie on women and men lie on men. <laughs> no, I didn't. I said there's women that lie on men. I heard women And then I said there's women. men that lie on men. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Listen, we listen, Anton. We's black, okay? We family. We all got family members who hate us for no reason. You think you better than everybody, and they're fair weather friends, right? Mm. When they with you and you spend the money on them, they your best friend. But when you when you cut off the tap or the spigot, or when they can't live up to their obligations, and you have to cut them off. They try to find any way to vilify you. Mm. And that's how Gene Deal comes off to me. He's like a bitter family member. I actually know someone who does security now for Puffy. I'm talking about driving his kids around and all that stuff every single day. We mm. actually train dogs together. You talk to that guy about Puffy, it, I imagine that that's how Gene Deal would have sounded 20 years ago or 30 years ago. This guy gets a camera put on him for one reason. To talk crap on Puff Daddy. That's it. Different. That's true. That's it. And one thing we love is attention. It is the number one currency in Black America. So he's gonna say whatever he has to say to get that attention, on the spotlight on him. Because without Puffy, who the hell is Gene Deal? He's nobody. So I don't believe the word he says. I don't even believe Cassie. If you want to keep it a buck, and I don't like P Diddy. Do but you? Do you? Do you believe Cassie, Quentin? I, I I don't I don't believe any woman from twenty years thirty years ago I don't I don't believe half these people. Do you, you believe SEQ? Oh no. I, I think yeah. to believe Why them they like probably would have. There's like a time frame like something happened to you tell talk to the cops don't come back like the whole money grab I want some money for my story is it's, it's, it runs a muck around the fact America. that you didn't press criminal charges against this dude you tried to get a payout whatever Diddy was doing Cassie was in on it she can't sing what was the only what other reason would Puff Daddy have to keep you around you was his little SEX toy down for whatever we all had one of those before in our past she was down for whatever <laughs> And when she married that white dude and realized that he was really a personal trainer and he really was like going to the gym in spandex every day trying to make money, she was like, "You are not <laughs> able to. You are not able to keep me in, you know, living the life that I become accustomed to." I mean, with Puff, she was riding private jets, riding private jets, Anton. With this dude, the guy's net worth is two million. Uh, I live in California. We know I don't you believe know. his net worth is two million. Yeah. So she had to do a money grab. And I'm telling you, if you ever been laid up with a woman, there's some called pillow talk. And white dudes are the biggest, the biggest like con artists when it comes to trying to convince women to do stuff, even bigger than black dudes. He was like, babe, you mean to tell me you did all that? Why don't you just make a fake a, 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 a charge against this guy and just get a quick 30 million. He won't go to jail. Just make it a civil suit. I can literally hear in my mind this dude coaching her on what to do to get a quick 30 to 40 mil out of out of Dittler. Mm. And she just executed the plan flawlessly. And once you pay one, the that's when the blood is in the water and the rest of the sharks gonna come. But I think Diddy has Dittler has an ace in the hole because I'm sure he was recording this stuff and he's like, if I go down, everybody's going down. I'm naming names, dates, all that stuff. And that's why you kind of see a lot of people are very flustered. They're very scared because Diddy about to drop some bombs on everybody. I don't think nothing's going to happen. I could be wrong. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't either. I'm a, I'm a wait and see kind of, I'm a wait and see kind of person. I think he nasty, but I don't, I don't think he did nothing to like, Ross level like federal time. If, type we had, thing. if we had diddler money, who wouldn't be nasty? Like, come on, Not me. Like, I can't do no. it. No, I'm just saying, like these rich we white people, these rich white people be doing some dirt. So poor I'm white people, poor white money. people, and poor black people be doing some nasty stuff. No, you true, can find but a those party every day of the week. trafficking. Like, I think that if Daddy was smart, he would have a way to cover that ish up. Like, if you ever go to Quentin's part of town, it's wild over there. 
That yeah. that wasn't that was downtown. I live like thirty minutes the other way. Sir. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Just come to Cali, come to LA. You will see all the crazy stuff you ever need to see, and you will understand that that's damn near a part of the culture at this point for people who have a lot of money. Like Diddy wasn't doing nothing that ninety percent of rich dudes ain't doing. Diddy yeah. ain't never professed to be nobody holy or morally upstanding. He's always been the party dude. Like. And Cassie was this little party object. She left because she was like, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, women, they get there. And then she was like, I'm going to leave. Two years later, she was broke. And she had to make a play. You know, she had to run a play on his ass. Yeah. Yeah, I'm supposed to go to Oklahoma City uh, pretty soon. I'm supposed to be going to see uh, Kev's mom and, and daughter. So. I'll got- be here. Hey, I got to check on them, and then I'm gonna come and check on Quentin. But if y'all ever go to, if y'all ever go to Quentin City, um, be safe. Wrap it up. No, let, 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 let's be clear. You came to Oklahoma City. I live in the suburbs. I don't live in Oklahoma City. I'm in the suburbs. I, y'all always make that as an excuse because I live outside. You of do the it. You do yeah, it. Yeah, it's a difference. You do it. Time. You do it. I'll be like, all right, man, what y'all city is broke. Oh, I don't really live here. I'm in and oh, Well, you gotta realize, uh, like, when when the black people start moving to North Oklahoma City, the white people move to where I live now. They just white people just keep going north and north as the black people are catching up with them. Well, they definitely hanging out downtown, <laughs> boy. Because listen, <laughs> listen, I think the downtown or or Oklahoma City, boy, y'all got some wild holes over there. Oh my. <laughs> It's crazy. They openly wild too. That's not an open, like a uh, broad general representation of what we're, we're conservatives. We're against that in Oklahoma. That's we're not red and all. That's not what we're I said. All, we're red in all seventy-seven counties. That's not well. Not not when it comes to sex. <laughs> but no conservative conservative values when it came to sex, which I'm not sure that anybody. I don't. I don't know if, if there's any really anybody that's conservative when it comes to sex. Um, I think that some people are a little bit more liberal than others, but um, I think some people just like missionary. That's conservative missionary. Okay, you your turn, my turn. Let's go. Missionary is one of the best positions. That's conservative. The best. It's one of the best positions, especially if you look it in her eyes and spitting in her mouth. It's better on the beach when you can look out your bedroom and see the, and see the o- and see the ocean. <laughs> she say spit in my mouth, but I spit in her face. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, my bad. They like that though. <laughs> tell you. Try it. Listen, try it. Mi- missionary is for the chicks that you love. Yeah. That's for the woman that you love. Um back there's when you're feeling lazy. No, nah, missionary is for the woman that you love because you can look in her eyes and tell her that I love her and, and whisper sweet nothing. Back shots is for that is for the bitch that you don't really care about. If I look in her eyes, I'm gonna come fast, bro. I don't know. You're a superhuman. Girl, I'm like, nothing <laughs> sex. I can't do nothing sensitive. I gotta be totally <laughs> non-emotional, like, or else I'm gonna be like, oh God, like immediately. You know, hmm. somebody know said, "Hey, grandma you. just heard that." Boy, you know it's after hours. This ain't the millionaire morning. How you think you got here? Why you think you got here? Grandma, question. And, gra- and grandma know more than you think. Shout out to Granny. Right. She was in freaky. Let, let, let's let's be clear. Grandmas nowadays are forty five, so they ain't saying much. <laughs> That's true too. <laughs> and great grandmas is fifty nine. So That's a fact. <laughs> 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 real talk though but nah that's um like my grandma grandma's used to be old and decrepit and gray and can't walk yeah and, they did they did mm-hmm. not grandma's did. y'all's age nah my granny used to be going on walks all the time like i walk me bro she was on <laughs> but yeah man but yeah we you know you know the black people you know we when that's one thing we do well, you know. Have y'all ever black. heard of this uh this girl named uh is it Desi Storm? Hold on, let me look it up. No. Her name is Desi Storms. Have y'all ever heard of her? Nope. nope. All right, it's this chick. I think she slept with Adam Twenty Two and uh, his chick before. He came out as gay. Man, I thought that, that was I I was I wasn't gonna believe that because it was April first. Man, I don't believe that shit. Yeah. I don't is believe. Is this a black person? 
With a Desi Ooh, Storm pick? Yeah. That's what she looked like. I don't I don't trust her. That Amber Rose. She got an like I'm, Amber Roses I'm, thing going through a little bit. Uh, this this I like white people stuff need to stop. I've spent <laughs> between 18 years of my life I spent with a Mexican, two of them. Ooh, Ooh. even better. I'm These just saying, I don't. Years of your life. What do you mean? I don't understand that. Like nine, I had a Mexican for nine years. I had another one for nine years. Like I, oh, I did Mexican. Oh, you Mexican. was in a relationship with him then? Were yeah, with two Mexicans. Mm-mm. Were you married? That's what. I, that's the story I told when I first met Anton. He made he hit my soul. What about the first one? Because she because <laughs> she cheated and that shit hurt me to my core. Was you, <laughs> were you married to this lady? No, mm-mm. we oh, were like man. from from like high school. Married. From high school to like ten years after, and high school, and 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 you know I ain't shit because she got married and had three kids with the dude, so I ain't shit. Bro, <laughs> I mean, what did you expect her to do? Hey, I'm with the Mexican girl on this one, bro. You know Mexicans are very traditional. I live in California, and but Mexicans, they want to have kids and they want to have them young. I know her grandma, and her whole family probably was abusing her at every quinceanera. When you gonna give us some kids? He was out of line, bro. You know you gotta knock them up Shame. early. Stop playing. So this chick, let me let me play this real quick. She was talking about how she got into her whole phase. I guess it's really how she started getting turned out because she all the way there now. But this is I thought that this would be interesting um, as one of the one of the last topics to talk about. Let me play a little bit of this. Started to see the toxicity of the military, and um, and I knew at that point that it was time for me to to do something else. Right. So you changed courses, and what 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 started that change, like to for you to get into a different lane in life? So I medically retired. We moved to a different city, and um, it was right around the time COVID like really was coming down hard on everybody, and uh, like we were on lockdown. I don't know how it was in Miami, but in Texas, like we couldn't go nowhere. Hey, how was it in Texas? Because in Miami, it was open. No, Texas was right. open. What is she talking about? Texas was open. Maybe she talking right. about when it first happened because everybody seemed like they was on lockdown when it very, 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 very first happened. And then once it started, once, you know, once that start, shit started carrying on, I think that certain states was like, nah, we open. We get into the Yeah, Miami. that was that, that was like, we were just like Miami, open. This yeah. lady is ignorant. Who didn't know Florida was open? Come on, it was all yeah, over Yeah, Florida was open. Texas I was, was open. Out there, Florida was popping. It was all over the news. She ignorant. <laughs> yeah. Let me see what's happening. Um, it, was, it was definitely a little more free. It was wide open. Was, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was still here. We got lucky. Yeah. Okay. Well, I love that for y'all. But for us, like, we, I couldn't even go to the gym. Like, we Stand couldn't. Stand down. Yeah. We couldn't do shit. And so we, it was a time where it was me and my husband and then our three year old. And we were just all in the Locked house all day. In. Like, the, the most freedom we got was going outside for a workout, like to my backyard, you know? And, um, so that caused friction in our relationship. Absolutely. You know, like I could not get away from this dude and everything he was doing was bothering me. And probably everything I was doing was bothering him. It was right. just one of those situations where like you need your space, you need your, you know, free time. But y'all cooped up, stacked Cabin on top of each other. What they call we it, were, right? I guess, yeah. whatever it was, it was horrible. And I was like, <laughs> this is crazy. I got my first DM from a football player around this time. And I was so green before this. Like I was obviously married, doing the whole family thing. Why you why you shaking your head, Q? It's the fact that you you married and you opening DMs and probably replying back to niggas is crazy. She married with a kid and she Good said she got her first DM from a football player during this time. That, 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 that's 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 all women. All the women around Oklahoma, OU football player. I'm talking to an OU football player. I'm like, okay. Yeah, but she's married. I don't even entertain. I don't even entertain athletes, and I'm not married. You have a whole child and a husband at home during COVID. That shit is like, wild. Women man, are blaming COVID. Like I turned to a whole because he was irritating me. You were married to him. Like what the? Well, hold yeah, on. Let me play some more. Let me play some more. Let me play some more. And then um, she said her first. 
My very first. Every girl remembers their first. Like, <laughs> I don't give a fuck what nobody That's said. That's probably true. I never had to think about that. Um, yeah. But you got to set it up, though. Like, was it like a thirst trap? Did you post some crazy pic? And he like, you know what? I, was I honestly don't think I posted anything crazy. I think he just saw me on the Explore page. And I wasn't even posting any like sexy pics back then. Nothing crazy. So um, he hits me up and he's like, I'm in uh, Austin playing poker or something. And I'm already wanting to leave my dude. I'm like, get me out of here. Yeah. I'm like, you're pissing me off. Like everything's fucked up. So I told him and he knows this now, but I told him I was going to go to my homegirl's house. We were going to go to the pool. Well, I went and met up with this dude. Not the homegirl's house. Shake my head. And and it confirmed everything I needed to know. I was like, no, I'm definitely not going to stay with bro. Like I'm having a much better time over here. And it wasn't personal. It was just, I met him when I was 18. I didn't get to yeah, do nothing. Yeah, right. Like I didn't get to, I never even had the college Ooh. experience. What you know, I went straight to the military. Is- so like, yeah. I never got to be, you know, right. doing what I wanted to. And plus, so, you know, you weren't necessarily in love for years and years. Let's try to make it work. It no, really- and, and it wasn't, we were fighting and our daughter was getting older and it just didn't make sense. Yeah, no. Absolutely. You know, you know, Tasha Kay said it when she was here. She says, every girl's got to go through their whole phase. Don't no, they don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. Who did he say said that? Tasha Kay. The one that got sued? Yeah. No. Like the girl who left, I was her first, and then her husband was her second. She was never any part in time a hoe. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't, I don't think that's a thing. And maybe right after she so. left you, or while she was with you. But why? No, it, it, it like have to go through a hoe phase. They think they got to get a lot of dicks to just meet and then meet their husband. How does that oh. app? I just don't get that analogy when women say they have. Well, to no, this them. chick was was married already. What a kid! Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about that Tasha K chick. Yeah, she. She wild. Like, what is this? What is this college experience that she missed? That's the whole phase. Hoes. They they get slutted out. They get passed around. That's fucking crazy. Wait, did she, she was even in the go military. to college? He's talking about a college hoe phase. And she, did she even? She didn't even go to college. She was in the well, military. Well, she said that's what she's saying. She was saying that because she got married when she was eighteen, uh, she never got the opportunity to really be able to ex- quote unquote experience life. <laughs> the the, the Bro, more like, I re- the, the more I look at this shit on the internet, like I don't. I tried to have this conversation with my dad. I said I'm not getting married. He said for real. I said I ain't doing it. You already been married it. twice. I don't blame you. Sometimes Bro, when I listen to these, when I listen to these, sometimes I just don't be believing them. Like sometimes I'd be like, are they saying this to get attention? Like are they oh, saying this to go viral? Because some. Like sometimes I know they be faking stuff, but I'm like, are these broads like these this dumb, or it are like they trying to get attention? So sometimes I don't need to believe in some of the stuff they be. They, they they believe it. Like you watch just the stuff that come out of women's mouths, and like, have you seen that balloon show, Anton? Yeah. Dude, you you have some nice dudes, no pause, no shade or nothing, and and these bitches just be like, no. Yep, they said immediately, <laughs> immediately. What? I think like, that show is fake because it. I saw there, some there, guys which one? Like There's like girl. eight of them. <laughs> yeah, I'll be talking about the one where the, I think it's like the original one, or I don't know if it was the original one with a girl that's. It's like hosted by a woman and uh, with a pink background. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody else, yeah, I, yeah, I think it's copycats off of her, but I don't know. What's up with everybody in these 20, 20 V ones and five V? What is? Yeah, that? I don't know what the fuck that is either. What is that? Yeah, it's it's, it's popping up everywhere on my algorithm. It's like it's twenty like, girls versus a rapper, or you know, I see, I see them all the time. Like twenty girls oh, versus. I see, I see it on TikTok. It's basically you have one guy, and then they come up. That person, it could be ver- guys or girls. They have one person. They have the opposite gender. And they coming up and he's like, okay, yes. Like based on your looks, yes. You're going to the next round. No, you two, no. Your feet jack, jacked up, no. Yeah, they be having, and they be having all the fucking views. That should be like 1.1 million. They do, like, man. I don't understand girls. that. Black, it shows girls you what black is. Those, those girls are getting dustier by the episode too. Cause at first they was cute. Now they just mm. get in. <laughs> they get in a little scraggler up off the show. Bruh. No, I'm like, I'll be like, who? Yeah, them I'm like, Dude, there was a, there was a, there was a doctor. He was like on one of the panels. Uh, he yeah, yeah, yeah. He that was, was my guy. Pop show. 
dude, that's my guy. He stood strong. Yeah, that dude was he, that dude was throwing all kind of haymakers at them hoes. The, the chick with that the um, nonprofit. He said, "I still don't know what your nonprofit's about." <laughs> <laughs> and he was chill too. He was slow motion. He was real. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah the, 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 these, these chicks. Listen, women always think the grass is going to be greener on the other side because nowadays women be on social media like the girl just admitted that she already had an only fans while she was with her husband but she just said she wasn't posting no explicit content no 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 no. she said she was on instagram oh instagram Instagram. sorry yeah she she was on instagram what people don't understand about women is attention for women is like that's better than money that's better than sex that's better than anything so what when women get a lot of attention on social media they start thinking, dang, like this is really real. If I put myself back on the market, I have a better chance of catching a dude or mo- mo- multiple dudes who can give me a lifestyle that's better than this one. What was she, what did she say when she lied and went over to the guy's house? She said, I was having way more fun over here, but could you live there? Could you stay there? If you caught Does cancer, that- if you found out you had cancer three days later, was that guy going to stick by your side? No. So women... They're willing to risk it all and take a risk thinking they're going to get something better. But when a man does that, you're a villain, you're evil. How can you leave your kid? All this stuff. It's like women prey on men's guilt. They literally are like, it's like somebody said, you can't hit a girl. And then she punches you in the face. That's literally what women are doing these days. They're just as vicious and masculine as any man. And they should be dealt with accordingly. I have sisters who are just like this, dating football players and stuff, and they get used and they get discarded, just like she gets used and gets discarded. She's not going to ever find this quote-unquote happiness. She's going to continue to get rented, and no one's ever going to buy. Let me play a little bit more of this. Let me play a little bit more of this. Until you go through that whole thing. I think every girl and every guy needs to go through it. Absolutely. I think it's part of life. Like, I don't know why people shame that shit. That's true. And everybody does. Some people just shut the fuck up about it. You know what I'm saying? There's so many people that act like they're not in that. They never been in that world. And, you know, like, I've met so many women that sit there and sugarcoat the bullshit. Like, no, it's just I've only been with. Shut the fuck up. Hold it. You know what I mean? I know that. What's the name was? Shut the fuck up. The problem is. I mean, but even men, men, men try that bullshit all the time. Problem is, if it's true, if you've never really had a whole phase. There's going to be a time for you. Like yeah, it's, it's, it's going to happen. You're right. going to have somebody slide in the DMs. He might make a little more money or he might look a little better or he might just be a little more available, whatever the fuck it is. The real shit is the, the exhaustion of, of, of another individual. Well, I was talking to one of my homegirls about it today. Actually, this is so weird that we're bringing this up now because she was talking to me. She was like, I think I'm getting into my whole phase. She's like 22, whatever. And I was like, It's so much deeper than anybody realizes. Like, we're all here living the human experience. Mm -hmm. We're eternal beings. I think when we die in the physical, we're still alive in the spiritual. What do you think about this, Q? (laughs) She an earthy chick, too? So she a whole plus of earthy chick? (laughs) This whole is prophesizing. (laughs) I'm just... Wait, what? Like... I'm just saying anything <laughs> trying to sound deep. Yeah, and I'm like, and Looking here's like those two guys. Yeah, yeah. Women child whole phases to what? <laughs> that guy, that guy turned his mind off the minute she walked in the room, bro. He, he probably just like, wanna F. He wanna screw right. her. That's that that's what he wants. He, even, he wants to screw her. He don't even want to so screw he, her. He just wanna get the views. That's all this is about. Let's get the views and get up out of here. No, I think so. He, he would go against her. He would say, No, all women shouldn't have hoe phases. No. Like ask her questions. Okay, do you regret going to the football player? How did it end up with you and the football player? Did he make you a wife? No, nah, she just went through the whole phase. She got boned and paid and got on. I don't think a lot of these chicks that go through whole phases get money though either. I think that's what the primary reason for the whole phase is. You have to. They realize, I, wait, you gonna pay me for this? And I've been giving away. Like, what is the whole phase? Women don't even wait a minute. the most skankiest girl don't just go sleep with random guys all the time. They get in paid. She got introduced to the world of prostitution. Uh, um, let's rewind it back, cause in college, them chicks weren't getting paid. They were just getting screwed no. and passed around. So, 
to I used to do the distribute them around, but it wasn't was about money. Like, uh, well, that was about I'm free for the first time in my life type right. shit. They didn't know what the fuck yeah, they did that for about six months. Yeah. No, nah, they did that shit for a long time. But here, yeah, here's the thing, though. Time. Listen, I don't know a lot of dudes that's giving no money, no woman, no money for no pup, for no pussy. I don't think that a lot of people got it to give, because remember, bro, like this is it's a it's a certain amount of women, but man, every woman ain't getting paid for no box. Not Thank no big, like, not no money, time. not no money worth talking about anyway. And time, listen, you got to understand, women, women. Even taking a chick out to eat is like pet. I remember this one girl, she screwed a dude to go to get some lobster pizza from this place up in LA called Barry's, bro. She got uh -huh. compensated and gave up the you, box. Like a lot of these women, you, you have to realize the currency. Women, yeah, that's their currency. Yeah, think about it. What what do y'all always say? 80% of women don't have orgasms, then why the fuck y'all having sex for? Yeah, but <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> you ain't busting it up. Why are you having sex? Women I do. I do agree that it's an experience sometimes being around. Like a lot of times, women is just caught up in the idea of being in the limelight. That's why I be I be questioning why a lot of these guys that are significant are paying women a lot of times. Cause it's like, yo, don't you know that she gonna fuck it's just to be okay. around you? Like, yeah, she gonna she gonna fuck just to be around you. She already was giving it away to free to a regular dude. What the fuck you sitting there sending her money for? She just want to take a picture. I ain't taking no pictures with you. <laughs> yeah, hmm. they just some dudes. Some I think dudes send money because they want to be prioritized, right? They want to know that she's paying attention to them. Put you to the pub the of the dudes, line. <laughs> the dudes who don't give a, sh a crap. Those are the dudes they really be pursuing. You know what I'm saying? Like, but but at the end of the day, it's all forms of currency. Women want that attention. I mean, it don't matter even if you marry your wife. I have an IG post and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because she want to get some likes and all that stuff. Working hard as hell to get 100 likes on Instagram. So these nah, women are nah, doing my, my chick be covered up. Slow motion. She knows she a reflection of me. The good chicks be my, like My that. old lady that that, that, that y'all throw shade on don't even have a Facebook. Let me I tell you something. My chicks, my chicks, yeah, Instagram. Oh, that's why she don't. She wasn't around when that shit started. Well, my chicks Instagram. <laughs> it used to be private, and then she she asked me like, "Hey, do you think that it makes sense for me to make this public or whatever?" And I'm and so you know, I was like, "Hey, I don't give a fuck because I really don't. I don't care like that. Like, I'm not no overbearing type dude. I ain't trying to monitor you. I got a lot of shit going on." And so you're going to have to, you, you, if you don't know who I am and if you don't know how to make, make sure that you're doing things the right way, then we got a problem already. But like, she be on some like, yo, look at my outfit, you know, the type shit. Like she ain't on no naked shit. She, cause she, she married. Why would she do that? She got a 16 year old daughter. Why would she ever do some shit like that? That chick was married man. with a child. <laughs> you, yeah, you'll be surprised, man. It's like. Women don't think in logic, like they think in emotion, and they like even when your woman start getting older, right? There's gonna be a phase, right? Uh, I call it the O phase when she like, dang, I ain't as good as I don't look as good as I used to. Oh, they're gonna start searching for that attention, searching for that validation. You validation, you could be like, you pretty, you beautiful. They don't want to hear from you. They want to hear from somebody else, and usually that somebody else are single friends or people on the internet like oh i could i could take you out your I mind though steph curry's wife yeah that's true Remember you're right you're yeah, right steph Curry's wife. She's she's like, she wish she got attention from other men and we're like girl but yeah but she, that, shit, that shit is a gateway i'm telling y'all like of course it is. it's definitely a gateway it start off as oh man i just like to you know i just want to show off whatever and then you think she got permission to say that from Steph? Nope. Nope. She, she, she permission? Why would he you even could tell by the way his kids that? act, he ain't really putting his foot down on nothing. But I mean, it's hard. To, oh, I would imagine that it's pretty difficult because he spends so much time on the basketball and the business side of it, right? And so that's why she there. She's supposed to be holding him down. Hmm. Women don't even value that anymore. Like being a wife, being in the home, take care of shit. Women don't even value that no more. Women are like, what you mean? I just could go and be on Instagram and and these dudes, you know, they want to get ran through because yeah. at the end of the day, it's a win-win for them because 
after they get ran through, they could play the victim. But but there's only few who make it, man. Like there's only few who go. Like Amber Rose is an anomaly, right? Like they think I'm gonna come out like that celebrity that I follow. No, you not. You You'll be surprised. Old. Easy it is for for girls to get turned out though. Like it's very oh easy because I usually keep like women around in the studio and stuff, right? Especially when I got people coming through or I'm doing an interview and stuff. Uh, they just make it more fun. They lighten the mood up. You know what I'm saying? Drinks is flowing. Everybody having a good time. Music is blasting. They laughing in the background when we say something funny, when we doing our, our interview, our recording and stuff like that. Um, You know, but people be checking for them. They be like, yo, what's up with her? You know what I'm saying? Like, they be, they be checking for them. And they'll come up to me and they'll ask me or whatever, like, hey, you know, what's up with her or whatever? Or can I holler at her and stuff like that? It's very easy. If you got the wrong dude that's kind of overseeing you to get turned out, very, very easy. I have a question. Well, yeah. um, the women that get turned out, do you think, I was just thinking about this, do you think that they never got attention? Like this chick, she was like, oh, this is my first famous, first football, I mean, first athlete. Do you think the women that get turned out, they never really got attention from men? They never, at one point, they never had men liking them for like when they were, became 18. No, I don't think that that's what it is. I think that part of it is, because it's different types types of turnout, right? You could turn a chick out and you ain't got to be no famous nigga or you ain't got to have no money to do it. Like if you, if yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? Like you can... You can blow a chick mind and have her on some other shit and she ain't going to never be a, like she's going to be yours forever. Mentally, you got her hooked in. Right. But then it's a different type of turn. It's another level to that shit. Right. Because the other level is you ain't never experienced it. I don't care what you say. I don't care how many times you said you didn't been out of town or whatever. You haven't experienced it like this. Like you haven't. You a lot of women, they front and they cap on the Internet. But the truth is. A lot of these women have never not been nowhere and not needed no money. Okay, so it's so, different. It's different. So, so to my question, let's say if you came from a dad that gave you everything you wanted, spoiled you, that type of stuff is not gonna no, like it ooh. Is. It it's, is. That's what I'm saying. Like a woman that's had her daddy and daddy gave her everything, plus men has always liked her. She's Don't not gonna play. jump at the first athlete or second athlete or well, just not, even. That's running. true. That's true. She's not gonna jump at the first one, but uh, a guy that she think is cool, he ain't even. She ain't even got to think nothing. Like a guy that she, that she think is cool, and you know what I'm saying. He know how to chill, or he he ain't pressed for. It, but then at the same time, he sent her the invite. Mm. Shit is over. It's over. Yeah, and at only, the end of the, the day, only it's nature, the only thing that's stopping. Me. The only thing that's stopping him from getting it is if he decides that he don't want it. If he just a dude that move a certain way. But I'm telling you, man, look. Because, look, it don't seem like that much. Here, here's the when it hit her. Let me tell you when it hit her. It don't hit her so much when it happened because she just living in bliss. She ain't got no worries. She ain't, she ain't dealing with nothing. She don't know what it – you know what I'm saying? She she got a different experience, right? And this is, this is a – uh, um, a warning to people, um, to guys. Y'all think that y'all got some security? They're gonna try to shame you and say, "Oh man, you just insecure." Listen, for a lot of for a lot of guys, it's okay to be insecure because all insecure means is that you're cautious about what it is, what position you're putting her in. Because a lot of times, she don't know what the fuck she's getting into. She gonna get whisked out, right? And she gonna have a fucking great time. She gonna have the time of her life, and she gonna have experiences that she'll probably never have without you, right? Because if she have that experience in her own real life, she got to make some huge sacrifices. You got to go on after pay to get this type of shit, right? Okay. And so not only is she going to have that experience, but she it's not going to hit her. Like, she's going to be like, oh, no big deal, whatever. I did this, whatever. It's not going to hit her till she get back home. And she got to live a regular fucking life again. That's when it hit them. That's when it touched them to their core, right? <clears throat> because, it, it like, this shit was nothing. It was like she was in Disneyland. Yeah, but now, you know, you got to go back to work and you got to go back to your life and you got to go back to your regular car and shit. And, you know, you got to pay your bill. And that's not, it's going to hit them. And so the second time, that's when it kill them. 
That's what. That's when it's over. It's fuck. It's mm. fucked up, man. I'm yeah, just, that's I'm like telling you, I'm telling you the real. I'm gonna really tell you no, the real. No, literally, like you hit the nail on the head because it's like this: once a woman see, can see herself in a certain setting, the setting she in, if it's not comparable or better, she like, well, I I can get that. I can be in that. So it's, so when the dude, so you, the dude fly her out or bring you, she sneak and meet up with the dude once, right? She's going to go back and be like, okay, I'm back at my place, right? She's going to already see all the flaws and where she at. But that next time when she go with that dude, and she like, oh, he really effing with well, me. Like, well, here's you know, the key, though. Here's the key. She go back to her regular life, but now she comparing. It's a, and it's subconscious. It's not something that she's doing intentionally. But everything she's doing now is a compare. Like, you know, she weighing it against what her other experiences were because she can't unsee that shit. And that's why all of these women is fucked up in the head. They think, oh, man, no, he got to send me $100 for lunch or he got to take me here. Like, mm. you're, not that. you're not that. But she experienced it one time where somebody showed her something different or she tagged along. You know what I'm saying? And now she like, you know, they let her take pictures on the court and shit. <laughs> and now, you know what I'm saying? Security was making sure nobody touched you or whatever. Now you all of a sudden you a high a high class chick. No, you're not. You gotta no. go home. And Anton, girls and dudes, you know this is true. Men, we get off that on giving women new experiences that they never had before. Like you'll have a girl, you take her out. You know, we all done took a project chick or something out before. Take her something. Uh, nah, I mean, project well, chick is funny as hell. Well, let me say, let me say what. I've done. You're on your own on that one, big yeah, guy. I'm on my own, but we. It's like even when you take your kids somewhere where they ain't never been before, you you like you smiling, looking at them lighting up because they ain't never been to Disneyland or whatever. Men get that same type of feeling when they even when it's your girl, you get that same type of like warm fuzzy feeling, and a lot of men will recreate that with every woman that they interact with. You know, even if if they want to screw them, like. Hey, have you ever did this? Have you ever did this? And women are just like, they're so blown away. It kind of make you like, that's cool. So you'll treat her like she's the bee's knees for that two days or one day or week that she flew out. But in your mind, you know, you, you know, men, we, you know, we know uh, after a couple of minutes, this ain't really nothing That's you know, she could just say something the wrong way and you know, she ain't for you. But in a woman's mind, she, she receives all that and takes that as like, He's telling me he wants me. He's telling me he wants to be with me. So she looking at you as another option, not realizing you looking at her like, I'm just renting it. I'm not really trying to keep it like that. Like a lot of dudes who really tell you, nah, go be with your husband. Don't be trying to, you know what I'm saying? But nowadays dudes don't have that much integrity. They'll really drag a girl out and then just drop her. Like, Well, see, it's, it's like, different. Hey. It's different for me because I only give a fuck about my money. You know what I'm saying? So. For me, I'm on some, hey, let's get this money together. You know what I'm saying? So I think for a lot of other guys, they, you know what I'm saying, they have ulterior motives. For me, it's on some, hey, man, are we going to get this money or what? And so that's the difference. Right. I'm not about to be flying. I'm not about to be spending no money on nobody and we ain't getting no money together. No fuck, facts. Fuck that shit. Like Nah, for real. When you Mike, get older, you if, if I'm if I'm getting you out there, either we either we get money together, or I'm recruiting you. As far as like to see, you know, working it out to see whether or not this makes sense from a business perspective for us to do some other business type shit. But hmm. you know, other than that, if it ain't about no money, it ain't about my time. I ain't got time for that shit. Right. Mm mm mm. I mean, I think like that. They think with their penises. Yeah. Hey, it's you. I guess you gotta get to that point because me, I a long time ago, <laughs> in my in my twenties, I was like, man, look, I ain't got, I ain't got money to be spending taking that stuff is expensive. Trying to take girls out and all that stuff, it add up, and you start thinking like, I could from a business else. perspective. No, no, from a just tricking perspective. Oh, I ain't bro, I, I remember the first time I spent some money on a uh, girl, my car got declined, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we went to we went to New York. It's called Butter. It was a place, and I slid yeah. that sucker across the table for five hundred fifty dollars for some dinner. Y'all spent five fifty dollars. That nigga but was you like, didn't know nah. you didn't have the money. 
Fuck no, that. like I was I was young. I didn't know because like never mind. It got declined. <laughs> That's wild. I don't believe that's crazy. I don't Robin think that's wild. Y'all, well, okay, y'all, y'all was spending like, five fifty on women for dinner. What was y'all? Yeah, that's like, wild. Dude, this, is, this is my girlfriend for a minute, but I didn't know that they. I was young. I didn't know they took incidentals out when you used the debit card, and I had like a seven hundred dollar hold on my debit card. <laughs> 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 I, 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 was like, I was like 23 years old, bro. Nah, Damn. man. Nah, I'm about How you my get out that situation. Dishes? Uh, no, I was like, nah, she just transferred me some money. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm about my bag, bro. I ain't got time for the games. I, I gotta we gotta get this money together. Like I'm I'm you know honestly, like I'm not even I don't want to know about your personal life. Like women will tell you, like any woman that has ever rocked out or came through or whatever. And I'm not checking to see, look, can you, is you coming through or no? I don't Aww. know your personal life. I'm not interested to know if you even got kids or not. I don't give a fuck. I don't care about your grandma. I don't care about if you got a man. I'm not checking for that shit. If you coming through and hang out, let's have a good time. We, we got to figure out if we're going to get some money together. We'll figure that out. But other than that, I ain't asking no questions. I don't want to know. Keep your personal life to you. Sign this, con- this consent agreement, this NDA, and this uh, confidentiality. And we rocking. Let's get it. Hmm. I gotta, I gotta, I talk. That's part of the experience when we talk and I get to know you and I get in your head. Y'all be asking questions like that? Like I don't be I I don't I don't be trying to make them feel like hoes. I had a, I had a throwback. Maybe he's a simp. This dude was like, look, it was like the finest girl. It's like when I worked in a call center in Houston and I banged the finest chick in there. He's like, once you do this. Don't switch up," <laughs> he said. "Talk to her the next day and act like you still like her." And I'm Mm-mm. like, "All right, I'm dead. <laughs> I don't know. I'm married. I've been out the game for a long time. I wish yeah. I was out the game, bro. This shit ghetto out here, bro. You already been married twice, bro. I wasn't married. We no, he had girlfriends, that's, bro. Nine that's years a is a marriage. marriage. Nine years that's a common marriage. law marriage. Nine years, bro. You've been married twice, bro. Real talk. Just be glad you didn't sign the paper so they can get you for no alimony. <laughs> somebody, somebody did get him child support. That's damn near alimony right there. Do y'all think that every woman got to go through a whole phase? No, no. absolutely not. You can no, no, no. Nah, nah, that's not even a whole. It's Do not y'all think that phase. most that's women go through a whole phase? That, that's yes. No, All they right. go through an attention seeking phase. But does it relate? Does it result in a whole phase? I, in, in my real yeah. life experience without taking into what I hear on the internet, I don't, like most women would say, I ain't never had no woman that told me, like maybe one woman told me she slept with over five dudes, maybe one person, but shit. She I think that mo- almost, most women have slept with well over five guys. Of course. I know this one chick right before she, uh, I slept with her, she told me she slept with 98 guys before she got out of high school. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no way! I just opted for I the head. I, I just opted Nine, for some head. I didn't have sex with her. What was she doing? She said her mama wasn't, and her dad wasn't around. It was always out of town and stuff. Ninety-eight though. I I I, I don't know why she would lie. <laughs> no, what woman? Why, women usually lie and decrease their numbers. Low, like they're lowballing. Eight. She was selling, she was prostituting at that point. I think that after a certain number, you don't, you stop counting them, right? White girl, with, white girl, with like She's five white. kids, white with five kids. Yeah. But after a certain number, you stop counting them, right? No, nah, there's some people, there's some people that be having notes. I know uh, this girl in college, she had 17 guys and she was a freshman getting tossed <laughs> around by the football players. And I was like, girl, you 17 guys? Yeah. Oh, she's a, she pulled up her phone and she had a whole list in her notes. Fuck. My homeboy had a notebook. And he played I he played football at a D he played football at a D1 university. So you know this nigga was running through him. But why did he why did why do people keep track of the name? Oh. Man, I had a conversation with him and like we wrote him down. Like we was sitting on the phone one day, like we was bored, pandemic, we was on FaceTime. We was like, let's write these hoes names down. Um, I, think, I, think women, <laughs> I think I think women should only count it if they had an orgasm. I think if Dear it Lord, wasn't I was enjoyable, <laughs> they should just disregard it. Like it don't. I mean, honestly, it ain't. It ain't like 
if you're not giving a woman an orgasm, she yeah, ain't gonna get, she ain't virgins, gonna get it connected to you. No, it all counts. A lot of people are virgins, and if you saying that, if you saying it, it don't count unless you orgasm. A lot of people are virgins. If you telling me, like, if I was most guys, like, if I'm just casual and shit out here, like, and I'm not really checking for you, I wouldn't give a fuck about what a woman thought. Like, I don't, I don't know why guys, I don't know why guys care. Like, if you just doing whatever you going to do, why do you care about what she thinks? Because you want them to come back. Care, you want, you don't, you do don't want, niggas want a concert. They don't want to just hit it one night and like, don't have her come back. Dog, the mean, very, the if, very minute that you, you nut, like, it's like, fuck. As a matter of fact, it's not only, it's not only the minute that you bust, it's more like, I already been setting it up because I know that I'm going to have post nut clarity after I bust. And so I already set it up. And so the setup is this. It's, um, man, I ain't got time. I can't really do this, whatever. Like, no, come on, let me come over or whatever. Okay, cool, cool. But I got to go. I got to go. So then when y'all get into it, <laughs> then you got to be like, man, I got, you know, it's like, I told you I had to go. I ain't got time for this type of shit. So you already set it up. To where it's not like it's awkward, like I'm trying to get rid of you, I, but I was already you. letting you know that I couldn't do this. So if we gonna do this, then we gotta go ahead and make it happen. And then that way, you ain't gotta worry about the awkwardness that go along with it. So my thing is, what do you mean, like keeping them on the roster? I don't. You shouldn't want to keep them around. You, the minute that you were supposed to be done with them, was the time that you should have been getting rid of them in the first place. You gotta wear a watch. I, I, man. I play the whole game you that way. You stand, you go. going, you spending the night. What, what we doing? Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, got, do a, you be night. doing a lot. This guy be doing a lot, man. Like, then in the night, he be trying to. Like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I don't want to be rude. Like that was a, that was like maybe five, rude. six years ago. <laughs> That's why they don't come back, bro. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm out the game is, now. You don't control whether a woman gonna come back or not, bro. A woman in her mind is gonna make that decision, like based on how she perceives her interaction with you you could do listen all you gotta do is look at most women the guys who usually treat them like crap are the guys who they're most head over heels for the guys who give them no attention don't That's call bad. them don't ask them nothing you know what I'm I, saying? I, had, I had that conversation with my baby's mom the other night um and we were talking about possibly getting back together and she was like you mean to me and i was like you like that shit <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I said if I let true. you run me over, you went until you wouldn't like it. The gang yeah. nigga that they all having kids by be running the streets 24-7, don't even answer them. My phone died, my phone broke, and they be madly in love with them. Women want what they can't have or what they feel is like fleeting, right? So if you're a person who just kind of visits, stops in, and then you're gone, or hey, it was great, see you next time, their goal is to capture you and lock you in and make you like that constant. Y'all, you know, y'all would act, y'all would let a chick spend a night out y'all crib. Not even it's been a minute since the, the I, question I is, to, have y'all have they? Yes, yes. If That's I'm not there, crazy. sure. If I'm not there, sure. No, nah, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, like, I'm old. I'm old. I wouldn't even wiser. let a chick. I wouldn't even let a chick know where I live. Like you can't. Like come. I'm older and rot wiser. I get like towels ready just in case you gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> so so it ain't dirty. Like like <laughs> like y'all would actually let a chick know where y'all live at though. Not at this age. Like oh, when we, we talk about when we was younger. Stands. Yeah, but still, she know where your Eddie is though. Get you up. These men don't care. Y'all would let a chick know where y'all live at. That's crazy, bro. I don't, she I don't, don't bring that baby. I don't she gonna put off pigs, on you. So. Y'all, damn, y'all crazy, bro. What you? So you know, that's, so you go to their house? Like, <laughs> I live in Africa, so it don't matter. No, I'm saying no. Why would y'all let a chick know where y'all live at, nigga? Because I don't want to go to her house. I, why we? Why you got to go to the crib? Well, we are you gonna have when sex I in the car? Young, what does that look broke. like? Man, what do you mean? That's why they make hotel rooms. When I well, was I young, pay. I was broke, my man. bed is I'm free. Crying. Because you don't want to know, well, you don't want her to know where you live at. Uh, most of the time when girls stop messing with me, I did some dumb shit and they don't want to fuck with me no more anyway. So it's all good. That's and, crazy. Uh, you talking about in our age now, but back no, in I'm the talking day, about like, I ain't never let a chick know where I live at, ever. Yeah, I was broke. Nigga, that was like the day. flex, like nigga. You give me your room. apartment number, you felt like you was a shit, nigga. Fuck that. <laughs> you, was broke ass. you get her to your house, you know it's going down. No, 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 no. I will never let a chick know where I live at. Ever. 
Ever. I don't know. That's a setup. For what? Yeah. Honestly, I mean, men are getting set up both ways. You going over their house, they coming over your house. That's a setup. Okay, I guess that don't Y'all happen. better be that careful. Must, that must be you big city motherfuckers. That shit don't happen. No, problem. no, man, that's a setup waiting to happen, bro, all day long. The you fastest crazy, way to get, man. listen, the fastest way to get to a dude is through a chick, man. Easy. It's through a chick. Like, you setting him up in a minute. Like, think what y'all want about me, but when these, when I'm done with that, they don't want to fuck with me. They don't want to come back over this motherfucker. They're she not worried about where the fuck I live. She on that phone texting too hard, bro, while y'all driving and stuff. You better be careful. <laughs> she tell us That's crazy. Life. I'm amazed at that. I, I, I block people. Good job. I like but that. Guys, I- out man it was great talking with y'all thank you for yeah i'm about to set, i'm about to get to bed because i gotta get up in a few hours so peace Meet you, hey man. listen i appreciate y'all hey make sure y'all go check out pan-africanism uh fights back make sure strikes y'all, strikes, strikes back. back make sure y'all check out island girl island gal q all right if y'all not subscribed to those channels then don't fuck with me and quitting just be a nomad out here so i'm, I'm just out here trying to <laughs> Rock with, rock with my people. I Man, love you. You should have came on the panel people. last night. You was already in the chat. No, nah, I was no. I just got home. He landed at nine. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, that's time for the. That's the show time. Well, he had to do a taxi. Bro. He had to drop somebody I, I, off. I just take my little chick home. Unload the bags. Give her a little smooch. Good night. Oh, that's cute. I'm real good to that woman. She's just too old. So why are you still dealing with her if you don't want to take nothing serious? Because we enjoy each other's company. So what you're you wasting mean? your energy with her. I, I'm not wasting my energy. You're, you're, you're used to, I'm not wasting my energy now. We had a good time. We had a good you're time. You're wasting my, your time. Okay, well, you're no, your- I'm not wasting my time. You can't tell me what I'm wasting. I'm not wasting my time. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to tell me I'm wasting my, my time, nigga? What the fuck you mean? Because you're entertaining <laughs> you. someone. You're entertaining nigga, someone. We, we're, Join each other's company. What do you? There's not. There, we're not. Nothing's wasted. Nigga, I just had like I just went to paradise and had a great time and had no, sex that I never had. Strip. I get that couple strip. I get that. That's cute. What's well, paradise? Define paradise. Hawaii. Hawaii. We went to Hawaii. Oh, you I'm went to Hawaii. With, I ain't never been to Hawaii with, before. We fucking went mountain tubing and shit. I thought I was gonna die. It was great. I think Hawaii's overrated. I've been there. I think I've I never been you, before. You, you didn't, you I didn't thought go you would like you went, you went, you went, you went with a girl. Mm-hmm. I've never been to Hawaii now. before. I actually had planned on spending the um, um, holidays last winter in Hawaii, but then when they had them fires and shit, I was like, I don't know what the fuck is going on over here. So, when you gonna hit us with the tropical with the with the Hawaii shirt out on a beach somewhere, uh, Anton? Like, hey guys, I'm in Indonesia never. for Russell Simmons. Never. <laughs> Listen, if you if you see me online, it's gonna be working. I'm I'm cooking up, I'm working all day long. Work, 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 work. I don't stop. No matter where I am, Miami, Hawaii, Tokyo. I never miss a stream in Tokyo. Not one. He he gonna have that computer even if they go out to eat. That's right, baby. Hey, the work ethic is amazing. It's admirable, man. I wish I had your work ethic, man. I'd probably be uh not poor. But you know. <laughs> I love you, Rumbo. <laughs> Hi, P. I appreciate All you. Right. Have a good one, y'all. Have a good night. Okay, bye. See y'all. All right, let me read some of these super chats, and then I'm going to get y'all up out of here for the night. Um, General Shreesh says, Anton got premium commercials before the stream. <laughs> uh, O3 Greedo. Right, time I got top before some Taco Bell. Hey, it is what it is. Uh, I'm a DM Aisha Curry to ask her to get a sniff. Jesus Christ. Anton, I just stopped through. I'm out, bro. Shout out to Ralph Spirit. I appreciate you for coming through, big dog. Thank you for holding me down. Thank you for everybody that tuned in tonight. Uh, tomorrow, I got to do Harley Initiated in the morning, the Millionaire Morning Show, and then we tapping in on the Anton Daniels channel right after that. Uh, probably to do a recap or something like that, but we'll see what happens. Listen, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank you all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed the show. Shout out to Island Girl, I, Island Guy LQ, Quentin for pulling up, and uh, Pan Africanism strike, Strikes Back. All right. Shout out to y'all. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I'm going to see y'all in the morning.
Peace.